Good. Testing. Better. location please <laughs> <laughs> it, it should be going now we have a we have a little bouncy thing over there you got the bouncy thing working. i don't know continue on maybe i usually always check the sound before i do this right and one time i don't we got excited all right everybody can hear us hopefully Stingo. Steve looks Steve looks sweaty. sweaty no dude this is like <laughs> sunburn <laughs> This is like right, 2,500 cool. miles and however many days and not enough showers and racing. And yeah, I, this is just oil. Horsepower <laughs> <laughs> sweating. Like, yeah. yeah. So we, we, right, we were just saying, uh, fuck, what were you we saying about the racing school? Oh, yeah, the racing school. school. So we were starting yeah. out, we didn't have no sound. Um, you were saying how uh, you didn't think I was going to make it. Uh, and yeah. then the biggest thing that changed it was them offering the racing school, which you know, three or four of the people in the racing school were just going there for the racing school for next time or something like that. And then um, that ended up changing it for me because I was like, all right, if I can do the racing school there, yeah. I was like, we're going to send it and everything. I think that's really <laughs> smart of them, though. That's what I was yeah. trying to say is because that pretty much – they didn't really promote it that much. Right. And then right? it really didn't happen until afterwards. Like talking with the teacher, Mark yeah. Morrow, um, they're like, yeah, they called me like a week and a half ago. Mm -hmm. They're like, hey, come out here, do the racing school. And then Alloy Art, um, their soft tail, yeah. uh, they have like that stripped down soft tail. <laughs> they're like, you can ride this, you can race it. And the guy's like, the teacher of the class was um, like a normal just sport bike two stroke 300 yeah. pound like racer guy so he's like i've never like raced a harley he's like i you know during the class he's like i rode a road king for a weekend once and i traded with my buddy like that's about all my harley experience yeah. and shit so uh he was out ripping around on that and everything but yeah the racing school definitely changed it for me um even though i crashed in it <laughs> so <laughs> i was gonna ask you is that where you crashed it yeah. yeah so we went out for like the first round of the racing school uh so it's like classroom go out on track classroom go out on track they had it all split up in between people's practice sessions and everything mm -hmm. we go out for the first one it's just basically like slow rounds around the track and then the racing school guys like all right get right behind me follow my lines i'm going to show you the race line you know race line's the fastest line around the track pretty much He's like, I've never been on this track. I've never been on this Harley, but, you know, give me two laps and I'll pretty much, you know, have it Figured down because yeah. like, I've been racing long enough. And I'm like, all right, cool. So we went out there, did that. And then the next time we came back in, um, he's like, all right, you know, I want somebody else behind me. And there was a guy on an Indian FTR that was out there. So he went right behind him. I went second. And then he's like, when I feel like you're comfortable, you know, I'll have you pass me. I'll follow you. And then, we'll, you know, we'll work the way down the line and shit. And then, so on the second round, like the Indian passes and then I'm, you know, right up behind him. Cause he's like, he'll tap his tail and he's like, follow one or two bike lengths behind me. Like, you know, just let's, you know, get through it. And, you know, we picked up the pace pretty good. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, he ends up having me pass him, you know, then I, you know, second time around, you know, so we make it like a couple laps and shit. And then he, uh. He goes and he passes me back. You know, I just probably picked a bad line and kind of scraping a little bit. So he passed me back, but I'm, he's like tapped his tail and I'm like, all right, you know, so I'm so focused on following him that 10 foot away. And then he's got like the perfect line. So I'm just like focused on that. And then we go to throw it in one corner and I just, I low sided. I just put it down too hard into the floorboard, dipped it down that just bike slid on its right side. So now the left side of my bike looks like the right <laughs> side of my bike. I pick it up and I'm driving off the track and then end it and go park the thing and go back to the racer school. And then we get there and the teacher goes, he's like, yeah, I totally blew one of those corners. The, the corner called, uh, maybe you'll make it. And I was like, oh yeah, that's the one I was following you on that I just crashed on. And then he's like, oh, all right. So I crashed kind of because I was following. So the were you supposed to line. follow, or are you supposed to be paying attention to him in general? Cause I know that's what I like to do too. When you're chasing somebody, yeah. it feels a lot easier because you can see their line. Yeah. Cause his bike had a lot more clearance than mine did yeah you know me still having like my half floorboards on there and everything so mm -hmm. i just i choosing his line was a little tight for the clearance that i had that makes sense. you know so like he went to go he overshot it trying to catch up to the indian that was in front of him ripping and then i followed and then he went and like oh and 
went too late into the corner, and then I went to dip it hard, and then just just wash out. Okay, poof, yeah. Bike went in the dirt, and he came so. back looking like he wrestled a bear. They, <laughs> for the school, they made him wear like an orange shirt. Okay, yeah. So I walked back up, and um, I watched most of his practice run, and then everybody was like, "Oh, somebody went down! Somebody went down!" I was like, "They're like, hope one Steve." I was like, "Nah, I, I, you know, I saw everybody start the pit exit, and I run up to uh, the pit, and I, here comes Steve." Jacked <laughs> this whole side looked like he fought a bear. <laughs> I was like, oh, guess it was Steve. So I like I parked the bike and then I was like, go to him. I was like, hey, give it a once over, wipe it down. I was like, I gotta go back to school because I wasn't giving up. And like yeah. whatever. Yeah. And then I ended up going back to the class. We talked it over and I was like, yeah, you totally blew that that line. So I blew it and then laid it down. And then the next one that they went on on the track, I was like, I might just sit this out and just make sure the bikes are right because. They jam that whole session, that school session, into, like, four hours. Like, normally yeah. it's eight hours, but there it's, like, you know, 40 minutes class, 20 minutes riding, 40 minutes class, 20 minutes riding. Like, and then, so I went back. I skipped that one and then made it back to class, and I made it out on the last one and everything, and I passed. You felt pretty good, though, like, being on the track finally? Like, how does that feel in comparison to all the, the roads you've been riding across America? It's different. So, like, with going to track riding – um, like, on a road, you're always trying to judge a road as it comes up. Mm -hmm. When you get a track ride, and if you fuck up a corner, you have two minutes to think about it before you get back to that corner. You mm -hmm. know, when you're ripping a lap, you know, like on that track. Yeah. It's like a, about a, you know, the, I got down to like a two-minute, one-second lap time. But it's like, you think about it next time, you're like, all right, I went into that corner way too hot, or I went into it too slow. Like, I know I can make it faster. Mm -hmm. I can turn in later. But, you know, like when you're on the road, you're trying to not – cross the yellow line yeah and then when you're on a racetrack you have the whole fucking track yeah you know so i mean you're going from one end out and then you're trying to set yourself up for the next corner and then it's weird because you got like the rumble yeah you know the rumble strips on the side and i mean you're dipping it where like your body's hanging over those rumble strips and then like you know you're like i know i'm on floorboard so i'm always sketched out like don't hit that floorboard because it's those are, like little doo -doo 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 yeah, jumps yeah. everything i was like that like don't hit that but you're like trying to get it just to apex that corner right which is cool on that track too on a lot of the corners they'd set up a cone you know and a cone on like the apexes and everything because like this that way because i want to say bob said a long time ago like you don't want to start throttling out until you can see the exit. And yeah. that gives you like an idea of where the exit, yeah. you know, where you can start coming back onto it. Yeah. And then especially with how far your bike's tipped over with how hot your tires are and everything. Cause the last thing you want to do is just give it some beans when you're leaned over on the thing. And then it just skates out from underneath mm -hmm. you, you know? So learning that, um, I think with my first qualifying, you know, I was at like a two minute, nine second and I was, I was ripping, but I was sloppy. You know, and then I think by the time race time came around, I got down to like a two minute, one second. So, you know, yeah, I saw your times uh, that your qualified times or whatever. Yeah, that was like originally like 204 or something like that. Or 203. Yeah. yeah, that was on like the second qualifying, you know, so the more laps I did, just the better I was getting. How, how addicting is that? Like just the whole idea of like, like just trying your ad. I mean, I could see how addicting that would be. You yeah. know what I mean? Because like on the. You know, I was doing decent on the first qualifying, I thought, and then I went out for the second one. It was like, I just wasn't hitting it how I wanted to, you know, I'm still kind of freaked out from that low side. Cause it's like, I'd have the bike leaned over, you know, my bike's four inches up in the rear, three inches up in the front. And then I was still hitting like the floorboard mounts and I cut my floorboards in half. I so then yeah. just give me that. And I'm dragging the floorboard on the ground and like my boot is like pushed up against the, the motor and I'm dragging half my boot on the ground, like just leaned over trying to hang off the bike and everything. I did a couple laps in the second qualifying and it just, you have like a, a 30 minute time session, you know, for qualifying, you can go in and out whenever you want. Mm -hmm. And then I just pulled over and I went right into the pit, you know, like the hot pit, you know, where they change the tires, you know, mm -hmm. but, uh, I sat there and I just shook my hands out and I took about like 45 seconds to myself and I was like, all right, let's fucking kick this one. You know? And then I went back out there, you do like basically a full lap get a running drive by and then, you know, do your time to lap past that. And then I dropped that one by another two seconds on that nice, one, just by nice. taking a breather real quick. And I was probably like, shaking out the nerves yeah, and everything just that, you know, a little arm pump, you know, freaking it's yeah, a lot of work, imagine. dude. Like I tell you, like I'd get off the track. I'm like sweating, okay. exhausted. I'm like, fuck, I need to lose some weight. Especially I was probably that the fattest dude on the track. <laughs> <laughs> like, Is the AC on? A little, a little saucy in here. <laughs> 
But, dude, yeah, it's it's addicting. Like, uh, I'm already kind of looking forward to, like, next time and everything, which I was told is addicting, but I don't know. Yeah, I was uh, I was wondering how that was really going to affect. I mean, be, I mean, you had to do a lot of shit to your bike just to get it ready for this. Now, I you probably already have a million ideas of how you want to set up the race bike that yep. you're kind of toying with right now. Yep. You got, like, some of the stuff, but... I was surprised how fast Tony was. Tony Tucker, the Tucker speed. Yeah. I was like, God damn. Dude, I honestly, I, if I had some fucking mids, like me scraping the floorboards in that thing, and I know I had more lean to it, if I had some mids, like, oh, man, I just want to see where I was at with that. But, yeah, for him building that bike, because I went out and talked to Tony before the thing, and I was like, you know, freaking, I was like, you riding it or something? Because like, his bike was pretty badass yeah and he's like dude i put all this time into it he's like hell yeah i'm gonna ride it like i'm like yeah that's the way to do it you know freaking you can go out there and like build a bike and then put a professional rider on it and then whatever and he just goes beats snot out of it or you know your own little labor of love and you know well i think i I don't know i was excited man because there's so many of you like between you and and average life of bob and tony and then obviously tony shreds yep there's a lot of people that i personally knew that was on the track that i was like fucking stoked for i'm like yeah. i'm like telling my wife like yeah so i know him yep. him that guy and you know just kind of like one of those things it's it's you see your buddy on tv in a sense and i was like right. fuck yeah you know what i mean yeah it was a fun watch man. i mean for their first event like obviously just like you with your first race you probably have a million things that you want to kind of button up and make sure that's addressed for the next one yep. same thing same thing for them and the actual broadcast of the race mm-hmm. i think that if you ever, if you would have watched the little live chat that was going on, it was literally like listening to everybody on Facebook talk shit about everything that could possibly right. be talked shit about, you know. And it was kind of like, ugh, I was like, I don't want to say shit on here, you know what I mean? Right. But for the most part, I mean, I think that they're also like for the the broadcasting, they're trying to find people that are like, I would imagine I might be speaking out of turn here, but I imagine they're trying to find the stars. Right. To kind of really grasp people's attention yeah. and get them following things. And obviously, it's the first race, so you don't know who the fuck that's going to yeah. be. You right. know what I mean? Yeah, just follow one, two, and three. You know, yeah, because <laughs> yeah, like, I haven't watched any of the, the footage yeah. that happened, but I don't think other than my little like wheelie start that I was on, like, videoed at all, like, during the race. So, But, like, during the race, we got out there between 6th, 7th, and 8th. You know, like, I think I graded at 8th, and then... Um, Charles Pistol Charles Pete. Burton on the Pistol Pete bike was in seventh, and then sixth I think was Corey or Kelly from Ness, and then fifth place was um, Danley on that Lucky Speed Shop bike that bright blue. Yeah, that wasn't the Lucky Speed Shop one a car bike. The yeah, it was yeah, car. It was car yeah, that shit was Stock that was dope. Yeah. I had a shit start. You know, just, <laughs> I mean, it was kind of dope, mean, though. Dude, it was. And I was sitting right there, and all of a sudden, everybody goes, that dude just went. I was like, that's fucking <laughs> Wrong <laughs> event. <Yeah. laughs> no, like, I knew it. Like, I was just holding at the line. And because, like, all right, so the way the race starts out, let's just explain some more okay. of this shit. Because, like, this is all new to me. So I don't want to, okay. like, whatever. It's like, you go out there, you do a sighting lap, you know, basically they'll call it, you know, you have a five minute card, a four minute card, you know, and on those, you can go out for a sighting lap. You get to the three minute thing. It's basically, Hey, go line up your grid position. You missed your warm up lap, but sighting laps, just go around, you know, track once you exit pit lane, then basically make it all the way around and then start at the grid position, you know, then know where you are. They had it painted on the ground, you know, so I didn't have anybody help me out there. I was just like, Hey, number eight, cool. I stop here. And then, uh, you're sitting there, and then it's like, you know, then they, at that point, they have like the two minute card up, and then freaking you see uh, a red light. They had like normally three red lights, but this one only had one red light that's there. When red light's on, you're sitting there. As soon as that red light goes off, fucking go. You know, so it's like you're ready, and you're sitting the red, so red light's on. It's within a couple seconds, 10 seconds or something. So you're just amped up. I got the clutch like right on the friction zone, you know, where I'm holding it back. and. I don't know. I just got antsy and just <laughs> <laughs> freaking front end goes up yeah. and that. At least but, you saved it though, because it was fucking high. Yeah, that was decent. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, did that, so then I got a little bumpy start or whatever. But then throwing in the, the first corner, like the first corner is like, 
I don't know, uh, you know, it's almost a double apex, so, you know, 90s and the 90s back around, you know, so, like, when you're hitting that speed, you almost want to, like, apex it once, diamond it out, come back, you know, like that, if that makes sense. Um, so, like, that's fucking nerve-wracking having, what, 14 bikes going into the first corner yeah, and all these yeah. wide-ass baggers, and you're like, hopefully nobody just, like, misjudges their brakes and just takes me out. I'll try to focus on my own line, but do that, and I mean, just... Fortunately, I don't think anybody wrecked in that specific spot. No, I don't think so. I think everybody kind of knew, like, all right, you know, you're, you're yeah. not going to fucking win it in turn one, you know, yeah. like that type of thing. So we, um, yeah, we took off, and then that um, Lucky Speed Shop bike, I don't know, if, like Kelly dropped back, and then it was like the Lucky, me, and then the Lucky Speed Shop, and then uh, that Pete guy, and then I ended up getting past, like, the Lucky Speed Shop bike. Me and him were fucking battling up behind the Pete, uh, Pistol Pete bike. And then fucking, I don't know, dude, it was between them three spots, like the whole race. And then Lucky Speed Shop bike ended up, uh, Dan Lee fucking got past Pete and or got back past me and then got past Pete. And he was fucking ripping, dude, on that nice. thing. And then, uh, yeah, I don't know. It was, it was a blast. I wish they would have shown some of that shit because I stayed within like, I don't know, 100 foot of that. Well, yeah, that's what we were talking about before because, you know, like a like in rehashing what we just talked about downstairs, but Saxon had asked me, go ask me, so what'd you think about the broadcast? And I was like, well, I felt like I have a biased, I was biased because a lot of my, like you and, and Bobby and all these other guys that I know personally were in that mid pack. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I think that if I was to say anything that might make sense, I'm not like a guy that watches a lot of races. So I don't know how it works, but yeah, audio's fucking up again. The fuck man. This is an excellent connection. Maybe that's on his end. What's it say up there? Audio hey, that thing on the right doesn't have bouncy bounce, things. Bounce audio. Better. It's good. Hello? Target? So yeah. yeah. Better. Okay. I don't know. Sorry, guys. We're, we're, it should be working. We lost power earlier, too, right? Yeah, we had a, a power surge here in Dallas, and our power just came on like an hour and a half ago, I think. So, uh, but yeah, just keep us letting us know if the audio comes on. Um, it's better now. But basically what, what I had said was I think I'll probably be – I'm more interested in, in the in the battles, the battles for positions, right. right? So it's like, yeah, you want to make sure that if number one and number two, there's a gap, then let's let's chime in on what else is going on until that gap closes or not. Not yeah, saying right. we don't want to see number one at all or number two, but I would much uh, rather see the whole, you know, like yeah. – the, the, the actual racing that's going on. And especially know? just like, you know, like not trying to be biased on it or anything, but uh, like you're saying, it would have been cool if they'd kind of just split around, you know, if a 12 to 15 minute race, like start showing everybody. So everybody's more hyped about seeing their buddies that were on it, not just the winner. Like, yeah. you know, we, whoever's the best, it is what it is. But if they would have went through like the whole pack, you know, gave any, everybody like 30 seconds airtime or 15 yeah. seconds airtime, just that, like, I think it would have been a little bit, a little bit better off, you know, just with how, how this is working and yeah. everything just. Yeah. Cause the nastiest battle, here, right? the nastiest battles were not up front. Yeah. 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 Once yeah. he took off, you could tell, cause I, I started walking around trying to figure out where everything was going down as far as like the fighting and I'll give it to Steve, man. They, that's where the battle was. Yeah. At least how I'm, how hard is it to to pass while you're in that deal? Do you have to cuz you could see some of them So it, like you got your race line, you know. Yeah. You got the fastest line. Sometimes you got to go outside your comfort zone to get a pass. Are you if you're going to do it in a corner? You know, like I watched one with Bob. This was fucking sick with Bob. Mm -hmm. Dude, it was like that turn one where I said it, you know, 90 degrees comes back and then Bob comes up, he hits him on the inside, he takes it out. And then like they did like the inside, outside, inside, where like they yeah. did that shit in dirt bike, but they did it on fucking Harleys. Oh, uh, dude, it was so sick. And we could see that like right, right the, there. The right thing. Wow. But, it, yeah. but it was like a pass, and then a pass back. And you know, Bob's battle, you know, cause Bob was in the big twin GP. Um, and uh, yeah, he was battling seventh and eighth. I mean, and that I was think the biggest class of the whole. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think like my finish was like point six seconds away from you know, that, and I think uh, Bob was like point three. You know, like it was close. I mean, he was running off that back stretch and you know coming in, dude. Yeah, and it's so hard to explain how exhilarating it is until you're in the moment. You know, freaking like I didn't think it was gonna like I didn't know it was gonna be like that, and then going out and doing the racing, and then I had the whole mentality. I was like. 
you're on TV. Don't be a fucking <laughs> retard. Crash this bitch. I was like, you already got your one crash out of the way for the weekend, so don't do it again. Because I had a couple sketchy times, you know, throwing in corners, and I found right where those mounts are. But, you know, you're so focused on trying to find a better line than the guy next to you, and I'm throwing how do you? And... How much do you think it would help you? I mean, obviously it would help you, but do you think a, a, like a, at least a second or two would come off with, with the fact of uh, switching to mid-controls? Oh, at absolutely. least mid controls. Absolutely. Yeah. That and not wheeling off the line. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I feel like I could. It seemed like a lot of the races, though, that whole shot uh, gave a lot of people like the position in which they yeah. were going to be at all race. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Uh, it, only like maybe in the in the actual premiere part where you can actually see like these guys that are just straight up professionals. Yeah. Yeah. Um, kind of overtake and do what they got to do and actually start to gap people. Yeah. If you will. Cause I will say it like a lot in my, you know, uh, my race and everything, I was still skittish on the passes. Like I don't want to take someone else yeah, out yeah. by being me, courteous by that. Like being, reckless. I was more happy just to be right there than for me being like, all right, I go to pass him and I pull the shit I did earlier or the day before, you know, and mm-hmm. skid out and take him out and take me out and, hurt somebody so like i kind of like you know sometimes because it was like my fastest lap was faster than the guy ahead of me yeah. you know like on that race but i i don't know i wasn't confident enough like i'm not gonna go out there like big this is your first time dude. yeah exactly yeah. i mean dude I, like you're supposed to have two track days before you did the new rider school yeah. and you know i just that was, was my like first track day. <laughs> 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 i told you on the last one i was like fake it till you make it you know yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. I don't know. Nobody, nobody checked my credentials. Yeah, so. but somebody also took somebody else out in that big twin class trying to get. Oh right. Well, was that in? Uh, that was in practice session. Yeah. Yeah, then practice, and then like, uh, the, the I think it was Cali practice. Guys. Was it practice in mine? Like, there was a Chris Revis bike. Um, Chris Revis was racing the Bassani bike. Mm-hmm. I think it was like last lap of qualifying on the first day and just wrecked because i was like about ready to get off and then i get red flagged which red flag you have to get off the track basically report to pits are they going to yeah. restart the race or end it or you know type thing that was a big thing in the racing school was what the fuck do the flags Everything mean means, yeah. you know like that's the biggest thing they want to know like safety like i can't you can't talk to the person on the track you know so it's like the flags are your communication you know so during the racing school like that's what they want you to know they want you to know the flags and that like something happens you get a, a a flag you know yellow flag that's waving or yellow flag that's stationary you know like keep racing you know it's just there's an incident ahead you know you get yeah. one that's waving then it's like the next corner you know that's where the incident is you know like you don't want to be like racing see a yellow flag i roll off it i don't have brake lights you get ass packed yeah. you know what i mean like it's probably a little bit more with sport bikes than that where you can yeah, like yeah, they're definitely. going so fast, but freaking you know slow ass baggers and shit. But yeah, other than that, so I mean, we'll, we'll talk more about the racing. But as far as the entire event, like how was how was the vibe in the pits with all the different teams? It was awesome. It was. Yeah, it was fucking nope. awesome, yeah. dude. Everybody, everybody was so happy to see everybody. Yeah. Fucking everybody had their setup, their get up, their you know they had vendors throughout the place. It was a little bit of a shit show when we rolled in there as far as like trying to find where we pit because like we got there early on thursday yeah mm-hmm. thursday. yeah so like you know three four o'clock on thursday and then they're like trying to like i guess leave room for other people and so like they're like just park here and then we sat there for like an hour and a half we're like what the fuck like we just want to set our shit up we've been in a car for 24 hours like yeah. Yeah. figure this shit out and then so we once we got set up you know that was cool but their whole like they had a stunt show the bassani stunt show with jason poland and you know smash stunts and was it that, like uh something back. happened in the east coast in this last weekend because i felt like a lot of dudes were out out east stunting yeah i i don't i don't know i thought like sea bear and them were supposed to be at this event i don't know if that just all fell through and they probably i don't know oh, that money yeah 
<laughs> follow it. So, well, they they didn't have a stunt class this time. They got rid no, of no. They got rid of the stunt rid of class, it. but they like since the beginning they added the pro stock bagger. I feel like so like, many I, people listened to me in that clubhouse chat. Yeah, I was gonna say we had that clubhouse <laughs> chat when me and you were talking, where it's like Jace was being mean, but we're gonna take all his ideas. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, like having an entry level bagger, because like I was saying, I don't know if it, I said it since the audio went out, but like there was a guy that went through the writing school with me. He was just there for the riding school, and then he had apes. He had a 21-inch wire front wheel. Older guy, but he was fucking ripping. Yeah. Yeah. And then he's, I was like, I talked to him, like, because he, he didn't, he didn't quite meet tech before the race school, you know, too. Like, he had a couple things that he didn't do, and he's like, I still want to get back with. Well, he's like, <laughs> I, I still wanted to, like, come here and watch. Yeah. And then I was like, no, I was like, dude, we got tools, you know, whatever. Like, you know, he had safety wire a couple things, you know. And then I was like, we got all that, which That's he's cool. done track days. Some track days, you don't need a safety wire as much as like what we had to do for this race. Mm -hmm. So then he was all like that. I'm like, dude, let's get it done. Like we still got, you know, all night. And then he makes it through the riding school. I was like, you racing? He's like, nah, dude, I was just doing the riding school. I was like, come on, let's go race. Like you already like, you know, they already have your name on the board and everything. He's like, all right, dude, he fucking went out there and like knocked his time down a couple more seconds than he was, you know, he didn't finish, nice. didn't finish last. So. Yeah, and you asked about the vibe, so that was the vibe. Everybody was literally helping everybody. Oh, dude, I mean, over, like, like, all night. You hear, it. you hear it on the fucking announcement, like, hey, does anybody have a twin cam motor? Like, blah, 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 like, you know, go to this tank, because they're looking for one. Yeah. Does anyone have a 08 to 11 boost up front wheel? Yeah. You know, like, go like, here. Like, 2 a.m., I was shaving somebody's front fork to put their wheel on with some spacers, trying to get the thing. Right. Yeah. I didn't even know the guy, you know, yeah. but I was just like, hey. Like, but yeah, like anything, like, everything, like people, you know, like our neighbors that came up by us, you know, people that parked by us, like, oh, we got tools, duct tape, this, that, yeah. like, I don't have that. Like, everybody, you know, as you walk through the pits, if somebody didn't have it, like, it wasn't like, fuck you, I'm, I'm, I'm against you. It was right, like, yeah. no, let's get out there and let's go fucking race. Right. Let's go have some fun, you know, like, you know, there's some crashes and watching people thrash to get bikes back together, you yeah, know. Looking for throttle tubes, looking for whatever. Yeah. You got a brake line? Yeah. Who has a 54-inch brake line? Yeah. You know, like that <laughs> Very shit, specific. So. Somebody's like, eh, right here. <laughs> That's awesome, man. I, like I said, I think it – one thing I would say is, like, as far as, like, the other – I know that the, the televised part was the race, mm -hmm. but I felt like the, the show, like the Nest show that was taking place, like – was there any custom bikes there? Was there any yeah. of that vibe going on? Yeah. yeah. I felt like they yeah. kind of dropped the ball with any of that promotion through I'll, the BRL Instagram I had page. no idea there was a Nest show until we were what? We were like about 100 miles away. <laughs> and, I, and I'm like, I'm surprised you didn't bring your FXR for like the yeah. bike show. Yeah, and he's and like, like I sent you the itinerary. I was like, the only question I had for you was, what time are we leaving? <laughs> yeah. yeah, so like, I don't know. He would have brought his FXR to... Yeah, you know, it was all about Steve, thing, honestly. But, like, um, I, I I felt so confident in Steve. Like, I feel like everybody was believing in him. Yeah, and I feel like he surprised a lot of people without surprising them. Like, I think they, that he he confirmed what a they lot knew, of right? a lot of we all we've all I mean Steve we've always promoted the fact like Steve's not here we've all been telling <laughs> Steve how you know telling other people about his ability to ride you know and and. Uh, not to say that you know he was going to go out there and win first place. I mean, we all hoped, right. but at the same time, we're we're just stoked to see that that I don't know that, that it transferred from his. I did the shit for tech, you know. You got to do like the little shark fin for like you know, so your foot doesn't get sucked into the chain um, that goes on your swing arm. You know, they want like a front handbrake guard. You know, so if you're tipped into a corner and you scrape, and you're like, well, you're you go in and I go up next to the person, and then like their elbows out and their elbow, like you hit your their front brake with your elbow, it doesn't lock your front tire up and you know send you oh, off. That makes sense. Um, so they want that, and, and that then, actually helps fuck. protect you when you. Yeah, like, the the weather. Side. is the weather fucking up the in, the internet thing? Probably. All good, not too bad. Random. <sighs> Sorry, guys, we're having bad weather here in Dallas right now. I think it's fucking up our internet connection. Um, Sorry, but we'll just have to live through it. You might have to catch the audio version. Um, so the front brake guard and then safety wire and everything, you know, that was with like, you know, just your, anything that goes in oil and brake caliper bolts. And then I had those 17 inch wheels I'd made by SMT machining. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, um, 
some Dunlop Q4s, which is what they were running in. Like, how King did the Bank. tires hold up in the track? Did you feel like never slipped, man? For real, about one, obviously, about one, <laughs> <laughs> about one lap, and that, and like, my like, I never didn't have confidence in them. Like, you'd come down the front stretch, you know, and it took a little bit to get this because it's like you come out of the the back section i don't know i wish i had a track map to like show you yeah, guys and right. bring this up but uh you come out of the the last corner i mean you're dipped in they have the track on the uh on the website they should if it's the east track if they do yeah well, would you, you know. go to the utah motorsports uh utah motorsports campus it's called okay we'll pull it up that's tired we're cooked but um so you come out of what that. do you think would be different if you were to run like actual slicks um so i've talked to people with slicks so if you don't push slicks hard enough, they cool down. And then once they cool down, they get, they get yeah. real slick, you know? So that's why with the slicks, they have the tire warmers, they have all oh, that shit. Okay. So it's like, dude, people come in, or if it's a long break, they'd have their crew out there, freaking put the stands underneath the bike, put the tire warmers back in, plug them in. Cause if those things ain't hot, they're, they're slick, you know, mm. like they lose all their traction. But like with those tires freaking coming down that front, stretch i'd get to the top of fourth and then it was like cross the finish line i'd wait about i think at a half a second cross and then i'd pick the body up you know get the air to slow me down yeah freaking i mean grab a handful of the front brake grab the clutch downshift pop the clutch out freaking ass end would kind of wag a little bit and then just throw it in a corner and you're hoping you don't go into the dirt dude nice. it was fucking rad dude, so so you said smt machining was the wheels right yep and they you ran their brakes too their brake rotors yep any issues or how'd you they were they were a little choppy um mm -hmm. talking with martin on it you know uh we had two different sets of brake rotors so he had his like his wave style and his roundy rounds um they had a little pulsation to them so uh me and him are going to work together and uh come up with a new nice. design and try it out so you know he's like it works for normal people's wheels but when you're pushing it this hard you know it's you know, <laughs> that, that's the one out. thing that I, I think that that people really have to understand is that lindall Galfer, all these companies like this shit is new man so right. like yeah. getting things that are gonna perform at this level is gonna take i think they even said it in the video it's like over the next they say nine to twelve months like these companies are gonna have time to do so much r d especially with these track days taking yeah. place or i mean eventually we're gonna solve all these issues and i think that i think that the manufacturers as well indians already on board it looks like carly's gonna start throwing some uh some shit in the mix yeah we're gonna i think we're gonna see a real bat like there's gonna be some nice baggers coming out here pretty soon oh yeah definitely What's that? oh track now. oh yeah, yeah okay so, so where are we at you can see the start finish line at the top um and then you got uh you know turn one and then that one you see how it kind of like double curves yeah you know so it's like almost you want to double apex it you want to hit it on the inside you want to take it almost to the outside of the track between two and, and three right well, well like that i'm still on number, oh, number i'm one. still on number one so you want to yeah. apex it and then you want to take it almost to the outside of the track and you want to come back because like when you try to apex that ni next one you better still be leaned over exiting it because when you get into two like i mean that bumper comes up so that so i mean you're leaned over just trying to stay away from it yeah you get to three if you come out of that and then you kind of straight line it and then apex that one a little later you know then you could damn near keep full throttle all the way through that for real and then you come into four um definitely four it's like where you think you're an apex just wait a second and then tip it in because you want to be on the outside of the track and then maybe you'll make it turn five that's where i crashed because it's just like you're hauling ass so good and then it's like that one is just like all right you gotta freaking get it down and get it over yeah and because then, if you're if you apex four that throws you to the other side and you want to be on the other side you, you want to be on to come the, in. the outside yeah. of the track or yeah outside of that next corner you want to be you know up there so it's like so a, a, a turn like seven is much more manageable than one because it has like a almost an egg shape on number one yeah that, that number They're one pair shape that, that turn one i was struggling with yeah you know and then it was like once i figured out where it was and then five like not a five and the six was pretty smooth you'd come out of it and then that you got agony and then ecstasy 
dude, there was a fucking speed bump right in the middle. So, like, if you try to roll that on the inside, there's yeah. a speed bump right in the middle. But if you hit that corner perfect and you do that double apex where it's like you shoot it and then you cut back hard and it felt slow, but it was fast because it was For like, real. you know, you're just so down, but then you hit the inside and you take it all the way to the outside of the track. I'm no expert, so if anybody's watching this, it's expert. It's just my opinion. Um, <laughs> the surfer dude. And I was like, woo! <laughs> <laughs> but, dude, then, like... <laughs> The, the fucking the eight nine and eight nine and ten yeah that shit so like from the turn seven to turn eight was like uphill you know so then it was like you get to the eight and like if you didn't know it was there it was a turn you're gonna blow because it's one of those just chicanes they call them so in that last podcast i did with tony shreds he talked about that when he rode laguna seca he mm -hmm. said that that corkscrew you you almost have to be knee on the ground before you even see the turn mm -hmm. to get to the first turn before you drop into the corkscrew. Yeah. So he goes, all you see is sky and you know, you have to trust that the track is going to be there as you're laying down in the corner. Yeah. So. At least with this one with like turn eight, you know, you would see the bumper, yeah. you know, on the inside, you knew it, but you know, once you got it, cause it was like the middle turn didn't matter as much. Like you're just trying to straight line it through that. It was just one of those little, just, you know, all the way through. And then, uh, yeah, you'd come out of 10, you know, hauling ass right to the outside. 11, you could take a lot faster than you think. And then 12 was just basically felt like a straight away. Um, 13. You get some fucking some speed right there yeah. between oh, yeah. 11 yeah. and 13. Yeah, because yeah. 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 I'd, get I'd get in a fourth, and then I'd jam it down into third, you know, going into 13, 14, and 15. And that was just all about being smooth. Like, you'd hit it. And then you almost want to come around 13. I'd come out like mid track. I wouldn't try to take 14 on the inside. I'd almost try to take 14 about mid track all the way through and not hit like a crazy like apex on it mm -hmm. just so I could set myself up for 15, take it wide and then cut it and then, you know, hit it on the outside of the track, you know, across the finish line, like 13, 14 and 15 was fucking fun. Like that what one year you're running through that third. Third gear, Ooh, third, and then I'd, uh, I'd hit fourth, crossing the finish line. I'd hit fourth, going from two to three, um, and I'd hit fourth, coming out of eleven, cross twelve. You know, other than that, I was basically in third the rest of the track. Mm -hmm. Would you say on this map that they made two and three is more extreme in person than it is on this map? Uh, yeah. it right. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, dude, it was so sick. It was so yeah. sick. Like, in the middle of this, they have, like, dirt jumps. Like, you see the mountains everywhere. Like, yeah, yeah, that's nuts. So we were talking about earlier the uh, the drone that was flying around. Like, whoever that drone operator is, dude's got some fucking skills, dude. Right, yeah. Because there were some times I was like, he better not hit him. Because, <laughs> dude, that, he's got one of those fucking fast yeah. you know, FPV-style drones and shit. And he's coming around, and it's he's... Like you said, you're probably third gear, so maybe where you're in like the 80, 90, maybe close to 100. I, honestly, Hard never, I never looked at the speedo one yeah. time I was on the track. Like, I mean, you were just so focused. Like, on the street, I look at the speedo, like, because you have like little markers, like, hey, this is 30 mile an hour corner. You gotta so make I'm sure like, you're not oh, fucking 60. All right, cool. Yeah. You know, on the track, it's just all like remembering what the hell you did. So, I don't know, whatever yeah. top of fourth was. Because I would like, I thought my rev limit was at like Can you 62? close out the yellow thing? Uh, Tucky? Yes, sir. Should be able to uh, move it over at the bottom. See the, yeah. The little slider at the bottom of the, the window. Up, down. There right you down. go. There, see if there's a little. Who had the best crash of the weekend? I think there's only like one or two, right? Ah, uh, there's about five. <laughs> <laughs> if you count the whole you know, weekend. Yeah. There's two people that crashed in riding school. The other kid didn't come back to riding school. Oh, guys, going home. Well, he like rode there, like I don't know, eight hundred miles, on, and like, then a stock, his... stock street glide, and then yeah. ended up crashing in front of me. Which I feel kind of bad because it's like crash, and I want to like pull over and park and help him, but I don't have no kickstand on the bike, and then they have ambulances on the track, so it's like you basically just all right, unless the bike's on fire and it's on top of him, like I would. That's his like street biker mentality. He's like, yeah. oh, you went down, I'm gonna pull over for you. Yeah, like, I don't know. It, I, feel like an asshole saying that but you know it kind of is what it is not working again? Hey, okay excellent connection sorry guys like i said this we've had a, a storm it's a lot of dropped frames is what they call it whenever it kind of skips around so we apologize but the audio version of this will be just fine if you want to stick it with us 
I want to thank all you guys for listening. This is one of the highest uh, live views we've ever had. Nice. Like 79 people watching it. Nice. So thank you guys. Sweet. So what else would you say about it, man? So like pretty much you were supposed to be here last Monday to do a podcast and then went we, to the beach. You went to the beach. <laughs> do you even have a job? Um, <laughs> I mean, I do. This is what I do. You just raffle bikes off or what? No, I just did a couple of them. Um, I just do parts. A lot parts. of parts, yeah. FXR yeah. parts, FXRs, and then I think what last week while I was out on vacation, Steve's like, "Hey man, you want to take a road trip?" Oh no, we were in Arkansas. Yeah, yeah. And he was like, "Hey man, you want to take a road trip?" And I'm because we talked about some other stuff he had going on. I'm thinking he wanted to go handle that. He's like, "No, nah, we're gonna go to Utah." I'm like, "To do what?" He's like, "Race the bike." I was like, "I'm down." <laughs> we talked a little bit because I really wanted to go. Yeah. I wanted to go really bad. I uh, was trying to get a media pass from them, and uh, it never happened. They never. I feel like that media pass thing didn't exist there, because I had like the racer pass that he yeah. had, and we were, or at least I was. He was more focused on the race. I was trying to get heads up on what's going on. Yeah, I was everywhere, man. I was in everybody's bay, hanging out, and it was so loosey goosey because it was the first one. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's like with the same photographer, like the guy that got the shots of you, and we've been using for the yep. the, the the deal. It's like. You just want the access to be able to get into the spots to get the uh, corners and things like that, to get the shots. And um, the more photographers you have, the more content everybody has to to, to promote it with. I mean, the videos are awesome because, especially with the drones, you can make great commercials and, like, highlight reels. But the photos are what get shared every day. So, you know. I did some good photos, too. Yeah. That guy's a really good dude. He hung out with us, what, the first night we were there? Yeah. Yeah. That was a good time. Yeah. We definitely went out there as like poor boy racing, though. Like, dude, <laughs> but racing. <laughs> like he said, I asked him, "You want to go racing in that?" Because like he had, a, he had a truck. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, we need a truck, all right. And it was like what then, 15 minutes before they closed. He's like, "Hey," yeah, and I'm no. like in the shower. I'm like, "I will make it. Let me send everything I have off first. He's like, "I don't know if you're gonna make it." I'm like, "I'm gonna but, make it." <laughs> but like, I don't know. He's got a short short bed truck, so he's like, "Let's just get a trailer." So we go rent one from U-Haul. You know, dude, those U-Haul trailers are light as fuck. Yeah, the motorcycle yeah. one. Couldn't yeah. even feel it behind the truck. Yeah, yeah. So like, we got that, which is so much easier to load a fucking big ass heavy bagger right. than in the back of a truck. So yeah. I was cool that so we like go get that and then i had some shit at the shop you know so then me at shop i grabbed like my tote with all like my spare parts and my tools and whatever i thought i needed um and then i was like all right i got all my clothes at the house you know so we run back by the house and then we're like he's like where are we gonna stay i was like i don't know where is it gonna camp or something I was yeah like, i'm like oh they allowed camp- camping at the track right uh, so kind of let me, let me <laughs> a lot of other tracks let you camp at it well yeah. so we uh we ended up uh, taking off, and I think, you know, when he's talking about bringing the FXR, I'm like, that, and I'm like, fuck, I forgot all my camping gear. Like, I have a whole duffel bag with a tent, and then yeah. I got a tent, whatever. <laughs> so then Luckily, he, I brought my tent. Yeah, he ends up uh, doing that, and then I was like, I don't have a sleeping bag, so we ran to Walmart, grabbed a sleeping bag and a pillow, and I took off one half the tent. He took up his half the tent, which was parked next to Bob's van. <laughs> the tent was next to Bob's van in the middle of the parking lot. Literally. On, on asphalt, just next to our thing. So like, for three nights, <laughs> he just rolled up in his sleeping bag. <laughs> Dude. On the concrete. On the concrete. In the but. tent. It was so hot, we didn't even zip up the tent. We just left it wide open. You know you could have got air mattresses. Oh, well, I have there. one. <laughs> <laughs> I came prepared, but it's like a single one you pump yeah. up with, like, your foot. Yeah, dog. Like, we didn't even I, have a I cooler. Was, we went to Walmart and got a cooler. <laughs> yeah, like, I already spent enough money. I was like, I got a sleeping bag, and I got a travel pillow that was, like, six inch round by, like, nine inch long. Dude, you got to do that jail shit, man. You take your shoes. You take your shoes off and you put them together and you wrap like an old shirt around it and sleep on the ramp of the shoe. It's a pillow. Dude, have you ever smelled my shoes? <laughs> <laughs> Especially after this weekend with his feet in the truck. I'm like, Dude. he's like, you could have just told me if I stink. I'm like, no, nah, it's not you, brother. I promise. <laughs> Roll the window down I'm like every other gas station buying like a black ice air freshener. <laughs> Oh, dude, it was poor man. But, dude, I was so happy. Uh, average life of Bob, because he's been doing oh, this shit God, for yeah. so long. Yeah. Um, so, like, he had the setup. Uh, he's got, like, a 10 by 20 uh, easy yep. up. And then had that. He had a cooking shit and grill. Coffee. Um, and- you know, his girl's there. Freaking, she's, like, best, like, pit crew with him. You know, like, helping him get tire warmers off the bike, bike off the stands. Yeah, you know, yeah. so if we weren't there, like, she was on point with it. And then having him there to, like talk me through the track yeah you know because yeah. he's been doing track days for like four years now like mm-hmm. we had that podcast we didn't sturgis what a couple sturgis is 19 yeah 
So yeah, nineteen. Go search back to that one. That was a good. That was a good podcast. podcast. We actually yeah. did it on the side of a mountain on the side of a house. Up in the top, <laughs> of, in the top of lead the mountain and lead. Yeah. yeah so, uh, but yeah, dude, Bob. I gotta talk about Bob. Fuck yeah. It. Yeah. He, Dude's focused. He's been progressing so hard. Um, you know, freaking just got a new motor in his bike and everything. And then, like, picked it up on the way out there. And then this is his first time on slicks. And then tire warmers, all that shit. Uh, he ended up qualifying in eighth, I think. Was he in eighth? He qualified in ninth, I believe. Ninth. And then, yeah, dude. I mean, he, he had, finished the race. He had a battle through the whole fucking race. You know, eighth. I think he ended up in eighth. You know, he was also, in the he was in the most stacked class. That's yes. what I was gonna say. It's the most Dude, biggest there class. There were so in, many fucking people off the line in quarter one. Oh my god! Like the, like the two top people were down, insane. Dude. Like a bicycle race one. <laughs> like, it was but, nuts. They're like five deep through that corner. Well, the top one was like the Indian, uh, like Roland Sands Indian Scout or something like mm-hmm. that. That thing was just gnarly fast. And then second place was Cruzy's bike. You know, with uh, was it street bike Sean on it? That kid can fucking ride dude that was mm-hmm. insane to watch and then you know th- just a couple bikes behind them where the group where bob was so I, i'd was really like to i don't know i don't know if you did you guys talk to cruising much at all why they chose to go with a back to a, a dyna style suspension instead of the soft tail style yeah uh, i didn't talk to him but i definitely saw it and a lot of people saw it and everything because that, that was a that was a dirty bird setup that yeah. he makes for like lowering the bike but obviously they put taller shocks yeah. on it to make it give it the clearance but I really wonder what was maybe more shock options, you know, the heights, soft tail and it right. has so many shock options and it right has a, a lift and then plus with height. Um, you got to think with that other swing arm, you know, it'd be that much lighter because that other one, you know, you got, has a full you got triangle, the bottom yep. and then you got the top and then the shock connects to the top, you know, so he built like a mini subframe that went underneath to mount the shocks, then the shocks, and then a, a, like a lighter tube. Or maybe even access to do a lot of like uh, tweaking. So a lot of people, they would go out there, run, and then they'd come back and swap their shocks for somebody else's shocks or taller or shorter. So maybe just to have more. Yeah, because you have to do a lot of shit to pull that, that right. the rear shock off yeah. the uh, soft tails. Right. Yeah, so I don't know. It was like, whatever they had done on that bike, it was fucking working. Because, yeah. you know, it, the only thing that kind of sucked about that track is it had a big dirt jump. So you couldn't <laughs> see the whole track yeah. from, like, even the second story thing. Like, that. I don't know, they had, like, that, just a dirt bike jump, kind of that. But you would see the axis of the turn. They didn't have, like, a screen. They didn't have a big jumbo. See, if they would have had a big jumbotron, they were just playing the actual live feed from... Yeah. yeah, the actual fight TV thing. And so I would consider buying it like on the phone, but there was like really no service. And that's what like a lot of people were saying. There was like, hey, I'm, you know, there's nowhere to watch it. I'm going to buy it. And I'm like, mm, good it's luck like when you that. go to a bat, I, when I would go to sports games, I'd always end up watching the TV. Yeah, because the they got the good angles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 But it, yeah. it was pretty uh, behind though on the actual live footage. Oh, was it? Because yeah. uh, I think it was Trask went live and it was like full, yeah. like 15 seconds ahead. Okay. Yeah. 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 I saw at one point on the on the on the uh, big or the the premier race, fucking trash bike just fucking blew oh, past yeah. one person. Dude, like, yeah, he had issues yeah. though. Dude. He did. That's yeah. why it looked like he's looking at the back and back. Yeah. I was gonna say, they had issues all night. They went they went through like a couple of transmissions. I think. Yeah. yeah. Just to, like they had to pull the turbo at like three a.m. Yeah. They were working on that bike all weekend. Yeah. So, it looks like maybe it's too much power and it's blowing too much out of it. Especially that track, like, you know, we pulled up the track map, like, dude, that track was pretty tight and technical, like, I don't know, how long do you think that, that front straightaway was, like, maybe half a mile? It was a 2.2 yeah. 2 mile track, the whole, that whole thing was 2.2 2 miles, like. Well, you're talking from turn to turn? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was probably know, about half a mile, yeah, like, half a mile. that turbo bike, like, it really, you know, yeah. I guess on a, if it was, because, like, that place consisted of, you know, two tracks, and then had connectors, and then they could add it and make it different. Like, it could have been, like, five, six tracks at that place. Glad Just, they did not, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah, dude, if they had it, like, full length on the straightaway that went like that, there'd been so many blown up Harleys. Because oh, you make it about <laughs> halfway down the straightaway, and then it'll all be You're topped done. out. Just, bah, <laughs> <laughs> There was a lot of track if they would have done the full yeah. thing. Did you have any issues with yours? Um... The only issues was just the the brakes. I changed the rotors, but I didn't have new pads, so that probably didn't help. Did you do better with the yeah. with the with the, the straight round brakes? Yeah, I, um, I'm noticing a lot of people are having better with just traditional 
breaks yeah. as opposed to all this floating uh, and stuff. crown cut and float. I mean, the floating is you still want that, right? But it's the uh, well, he didn't even have the floating on. The I don't. I don't do floating on rear anymore. Yeah, for real. Um, I've, I've I've blown out two Galfers and you know a Lindall in the rear, like just the <laughs> carriers. It's a lot of with a bagger. It's a lot of bike to stop. You know, you kind of need a. a you probably need a, a a better carrier, right? Like yeah, just like, something like maybe even still. Yeah, like so I just do the one piece, you know, solid rotor, and I've had more better luck with that. So um, I don't know. Yeah, but like you were saying earlier, when they but, were announcing it, like a lot of people are going to start developing stuff. You could tell. Yeah. Yeah, you could tell a lot of people are starting to take notes and run data, and you're going to start to see a lot of aftermarket parts specifically designed for the track. Yeah. Man, like I, after looking at a lot of the bikes that people were building, I guess that Woolies Speed Woolies Speed Shop Wool, or whatever Woolies Workshop. How were those bikes in person? Sick. Every bike was sick, dude. So Every sick. Every bike was sick. Even like the the redneck racing guys like us, right? Yeah. They were all sick, dude. Dude, yeah. And then I just loved it all. Uh, the one guy that won the uh, my class, uh, Benny Benny Carlson, I mm -hmm. think. Uh, he was supposed to be in the GP. But apparently his expert license like expired. Like he was an old like pro hooligan XR yeah. twelve hundred guy. Yeah, yeah, I heard that. I mean, he brought his old race bikes with him and everything. Yeah, yeah so they ended up uh, bumping him back to uh, you know the um, pro stock bagger. So he won that, and then he won the hooligan and everything. Super yeah, I remember cool. him talking about he had to jump right onto yeah. another track right afterwards. Yeah, yeah. yeah. super cool guy. <laughs> like after I crashed, like I didn't like hit my helmet, but like my. Shield like a had a couple scratches in it and everything, and then he's like, "Oh, I got an extra," and just threw me a shield. And nice. Yeah. It's like, hell yeah, thank you. Did he win this hooligan class? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. He won fucking first in both of them. Yep. Okay, Dan. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah, dude. I mean, well, every time like, he ran a, a lap, he'd come by and talk to Bob. Yeah. And he'd say, "Hey, you want to do this, 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 and this?" And I'm like, "Yeah." He like comes out. He's like, "You got a track map?" And then I like had one earlier, and I handed it to Bob. He's like, "Yep." And he's like, "All right, do this. You think you're gonna go here?" He's like, "Go in harder." take it more to the outside he's like done that and bob said he went out there and like you know thought he was already fast and then pulled another two seconds off you know oh man that's crazy and, dude it's it's such like because it's like racing the clock on you know like whatever uh you know the only other time i've done this is go-karts but i'm too fat so they're never fast like, <laughs> <laughs> i'm like finally i got something like with torque to get me out of the corner so it's like it's fun to me like yeah you know and it's something i'm so used to with like the you know my harley i've ridden it all over so it's like i'm you know i know we're skipping ahead here but dude we got to give a shout out to the dtf performance and the you know hpi, HPI. like the, that bike we all saw it come together over the last couple of months and i guess I, I could be speaking out of turn but it felt badass to see one of the smaller companies oh yeah dude Fuck go him. up and take home a win and may, yeah. i don't i'm not going to discredit their win or anything but i don't know if it's maybe the track was tighter and not as big. I don't, I don't know what the uh, how they've had, that track compared to. Well, they've had some to, fucking problems with that bike because it's have. like the the first um, race, uh, the King of the Baggers race. So they that was the Bassani bike then, you know, because Dino Tomasi um, DTF or whatever. Because that's what my front fender is on my bike and my dash. Yeah. And then so I've talked to him about this. I talked to them about this at HPI Bike Night last year because mm -hmm. like you know and everything. I gave him my couple little pointers. You know, with like how my bike set up, because I didn't know how crazy this shit was gonna get. But yeah, you know, I, I talked to them, you know, a couple hours that night. You know what they're doing, what I did, but they had some shit happen at the first one. Like I think their cam timing ended up being off, so then it took out the top end, and then it took out the top end again, so they didn't get the race. So that was on the first one. And then this last one, they had it lifted so high up in the rear, or this one before this. Uh, they had lifted so high up, so then they lost the chain right at the beginning of the race. You know, so now they Fuck. built uh, um, chain tensioners. You know, to run the chain higher. So, so we're talking about DTF did this. DTF spike. Okay. Uh, yeah. HPI actually has done He's a done ton all of those. work. Yeah. Uh, Jimmy and you know Billy and all them guys. Eight uh, HPI. But I, I talk to Jimmy all the time. You yeah. know, freaking Jimmy's the one that tuned my bike. That's been you know running solid with one twenty four forever. But, uh, you know, they're building all this other things, and then it's, like, exhaust, and then they're changing around, and they're like, we need more clearance. And that's the bike that has the fucking exhaust that goes through Into the bag. Into the bag, yeah. Because I was talking to Jimmy. He's like, yeah, I'm sitting in the shop one night. He's like, fuck it. We're gonna, we can run it higher. And Billy's in there like, how do we run it higher? He's like, that gets out a saw and cuts the fucking bag open and just, and just howls out the bag. They're like, we're running it through the bag. Like, 
you know, whatever. No like, rules did the rules? It seems, <laughs> no it rules seems for like that. It, it, you know, that bike just it had the power. Yep. It had a great rider on it, mm-hmm. and I mean, it held off the Indian. Yeah, you know, that's the most important. And part. then that, yeah. like Tyler O'Hara on that Indian, like he just doesn't make mistakes really. You know? Yeah, it's like yeah. all the way through the race, like he's just waiting for that one time for you know if he is behind for some that that last out. race. I really feel like the the race was that third, fourth, and fifth spot between. Yeah. Um, it was a fueling bike, um, alloy art fueling, and. Um, the Sly Fox. Uh, Sly, Sly Fox. Fox. Sly yeah. The, yeah. Uh, and Corey West ended up getting it, which was on Sly Fox. Yeah. Sly yeah. Fox. So number nine. The red number nine. Yeah. Yeah, dude. That fucking, that shit was fucking cool. Just being like right there. On the track. Watching them come around the, that I got to, I got to smell the race. I kind of got to give them shit though. Cause every, they keep, they keep talking up Ben Bostrom so fucking hardcore. And don't get me wrong. I know him from back in the day in the, in, in the, did he, did he ever race GP or was he always just like super bike? He was always super bike. Super bike. So badass racer used to have some of the sickest helmets back in the day with the Swami or Suami or something like that helmets. Some of the baddest shit. But I mean, come on, man. Like, <laughs> dude's not, you know, like, <laughs> I ain't talking no shit. I, 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 <laughs> no, I'm just so saying. Anybody who was out on the, track, on the fucking yeah. track, yeah. Yeah. Oh, anybody who was out on that track, down on that guy with the twenty front or the twenty one inch front spoke rim with the, with the apes, yeah. Dude. I can't. I'm say just nothing a spectator. About that just yeah. yeah. No, I can't say talking shit. Yeah, talking yeah. a little bit of shit. Even man. the guy who was a uh, what was his name? Uh, Arroyo, right? Yeah, he had some yeah. shoes, right? But yeah, he went out there. He was stoked. We were all walking the track together. He was like, "Hey, man, we're just all gonna have fun." And sure enough, I saw everybody having fun. Even me, I didn't. Get, I had no dog in the fight except for my boy Steve. But it was so cool to see that community come together. Yeah, it's yeah. a different vibe. Yeah, you know, they were talk, definitely talking shit. Don't get me wrong. A uh, dude brought up the fact that uh, the Harley Factory team didn't show up to this event. And I think that's a nope. lot of politics that has to do with yeah. the, the I, two I different things. I was honestly things. surprised to see that. Hey, uh, the Tyler won. O'Hara yeah. showed up. But what I don't understand is that freaking Garcia with the other Indian didn't show up. But then. Roland Sands like different bike with Indian did. I was like, I didn't. Well, when the guy won the GP, what did he scream out on this intercom? Oh, he's like, Harley, give, give us some, some money. money. <laughs> <laughs> the, the DTF uh, yeah. HGI bike and shit. So, well, you know, from what I've heard through a lot of when I went out to California and talked to these guys, there there's a lot behind the scenes shit that's going on between the two uh, promoters, basically. But you know. I'm just trying to watch Harley's race around a track. So whoever's going to figure it out, I'm, I'm definitely down to watch right. and support it and everything. And uh, whoever is going to uh, – you know, there was a lot of people that, that, that I guess they had a issue with guys like yourselves getting on the track. Mm-hmm. You know, they didn't want you guys getting on the track with professional riders, blah, 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 because you didn't have the experience. But at the same time, like, how else are you going to ever get on the track right. and figure this out? Well, that's you what I'm saying. You got to go do it with, like, sport bikes and all that shit, like, and – have people just literally blow by in you all day, yeah. like, and trying to get comfortable, or we went all out on track is, because I think even the dude with the 21 inch apes, like, we did six laps, and the one dude that won, uh, Benny Carlson, like, he was fast. We had 21 inch apes? 21 inch wheel. 21 inch wheel, wheel. 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 but he also had apes. <laughs> yeah, he's out there. But I, I asked him at the end, I was like, did you ever get lapped? He's like, no, I never got lapped. Right. I was yeah. like, that's fucking sick, like, you know, so yeah. no harm, no foul, fucking, the race was short enough, we did all that shit, like, there was some passing, but, you know, like it's not like you know you're giving like haters feel right now with the ape hanger um, thing. I, we, you know, it's funny is we talked about that. We talked about a lot of things in the 23 hours each way, <laughs> right? And one of the things was uh, you mentioned that people didn't want like you know street guys going out there without creds, yeah. right? That's what's going to make that sport. It is, and not everybody has the backing of these huge sponsors and the mother company and all this money. But if you have the passion, you have the bike, and you have the will, like he did. Mm-hmm. Go out mm-hmm. there, man. It was so cool. I think the BRL will do good, yeah. honestly. Yeah, because well, it's gonna be it's gonna be a little bit more grassrooty. Yeah, you know? they it's give like, the option if they for everybody it that way, to it's like, have a turn. You go to like the Moto America shit, and they're like, "This is how it is." You know, this there's a lot of money to even race at the Moto America thing. Yeah. From what I've heard, and they put they put fucking pro. Street well, Bob just chimed in. He said that uh, Kyle Wyman just had elbow surgery, and Travis Wyman was racing Moto America at the Ridge in Washington. Uh, they didn't have riders. Sure oh, thanks, Bob. That kind of uh, Bob, we love you. Thank you, right. thank you for the breakfast. Yeah, so thanks, morning. thanks, Bob. <laughs> and, <laughs> your, and your chick. <laughs> but yeah, dude, I, I don't know. It was a freaking great ass time. Like yeah. it, it was kind of a shit show event a little bit as far as setting up. But I knew it was the first event they did. Like yeah, they're gonna work. So like, I like you. You can't hate on them. Like yeah. you're like, oh, 
things go smoother. I'm like, go try to put this on and try and make it go smoother. Like, mm-hmm. you know, there's people out here giving their best effort. Yeah. Like, whatever. So I, you know, get leniency on it. And their leniency made it so I could raise. <laughs> 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 so did y'all get any inside information as to when the next race is going to take place? We heard something in the air. I don't know. We're not. I've just heard it through Grapevine and hear it over anything, but I heard something about Texas in September. I yeah. know mm-hmm. that's what I've heard a million times too. I just yeah. they haven't announced it. Yeah, I haven't heard any. And it sucks because we've been trying not to plan anything. Right. Than the fact that we all want to be there. I mean, dude, right. it's coming to Texas. We're all fucking going. Yeah. Of course. You know what I mean? So, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. I don't want. I I don't really. You know, like this is. I guess I'm too old now because I see this. And I'd love to be there, and I want to be in it, but I don't know if I really have a desire to try to race. Dude, Ryan, the guy that you know, had I'm that, do it. that the, the bagger with the apes, he was not a young dude at all, not yeah. a middle-aged dude at all. I'm looking at it more from the fact that I don't know if I have time to dedicate to True. this. Right. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I'm sure that I would love it, but I definitely don't want to do it on my travel bike. Right. And like I was telling you, because you said you want to build an FXR. It's like, do. my question was, how are you going to get it not to leak? <laughs> It'll happen. <laughs> It'll happen. Twin cam swap it. <laughs> <laughs> well, there was an FXR out there. Uh, with Joker, a twin cam. With a twin cam, <laughs> yes. But, uh, you know, you can Audio make an FXR now. Leak. Sorry. Was, Sorry there guys. Al- was there only one FXR out of all those? Uh, pretty yeah, much. Was, yeah. yeah, it was Joker. Joker, Joker 1911, I think is On Instagram. Instagram. Yeah, yeah, dude, dude is a uh, beast, man. Is what, yeah, he started in the back of the pack because he either had a crash or the motor shit. So Which the motor blew he, all fine. The, he was, somebody gave him a, a, a loaner motor. They swapped in the middle of the night that he never ran and then yeah. goes out there and he runs from 21st to 5th in the fucking uh, yeah, go race. Yeah, in the, in in the, the big, the big twin class, in the big twin, big twin class. He rode from fucking 21st to 5th. And what they the didn't fuck show they that shit on the fucking Don't camera. Know. Don't, he, he probably didn't even <laughs> know. They just handed him a motor. Well, <laughs> like, he, he's, he's friends with like Tony Saloma and shit. Yeah, like, yeah, fucking, yeah. like, they've been doing this like for years so, yeah like and this for i've talked to him you know here and there on instagram and shit but this is my first time you know meeting him in person and all it that, was good so. seeing tony actually uh podium this race yep. yeah i think he's so much more comfortable on his uh his, his smaller bike than he is the bagger do you ever see like on the live when tony ran off the track or no Mm-mm. oh dude <laughs> <laughs> well was, so i'm sitting there i'm next to like joker fucking uh uh, Lucas' name, um, yeah. fucking, we're like on the the front straight wall, and then that, and then like I don't know, a couple laps left, and like we're all fist bumping Tony as he goes by, and like <laughs> he's like as he's just full board, just you know, tucked on the, the, the us front little, stretch, a little fist and, and then we look back and like see whoever's coming, and then we look back and then we see a dirt cloud, and freaking, <laughs> he off it. I was like, dude, you broke his concentration by making a fist. <laughs> <laughs> on the front stretch. Hey, he kept it up, though. Dude. He kept it yeah. up, but then the, that the chick on the Saddleman bike ended up passing, passing him. Yeah. And then he, I don't think he ever gained that spot back, but he didn't. It's y'all's fault. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, blame, I blame Lucas. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. It was it was awesome seeing him out there Fuck running, yeah, dude. man. Dude, Me and him run. have done, like, the last podcast we did together when I, was, when I rode to Cali back in uh, March late at night we're in this like room he built to grow weed out <laughs> the whole time every interview he did on that whole podcast i was like this dude's high as fuck right now. What, do they, what do they call that uh they got safety meetings yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have a safety meeting dude i was like but i was gonna say it's like man like all the nerves i would feel like you need something to kind of like almost like a shot or something just before you get on the road oh it was like even like just watching bob get amped up before a race like yeah, yeah i mean he's just like he had his generator and his fan he's sitting in front of the fan and like earplugs, he's just like yeah. that earplugs like whatever like people are talk- i'm like trying to get people away yeah because like, like him right get, before he sits down let him like, get in this moment and, like, yeah he's like what's hey, that, guys i'm gonna get into what's that Dewey Cox mode. intro <laughs> <laughs> well he looked like rocky getting ready for a fight like, yeah yeah he's just like sorry guys i'm getting anti-social mode popped it in looked down i'm like yeah, then I like you go by like you know like just a couple pits down from us. Uh, there was a bunch of like you Cali know, guys, dudes. yeah, Cali dudes, yeah, and the natives, sitting there putting on their things with their earbuds in, you know, just like that. Chilling. They like look at you, then they look away. Like these motherfuckers got way more in. I was like sitting there like <laughs> <laughs> Steve, Steve was literally like I was like hey you need some water. He's like no I'm good. He's like I just want a cigarette. I'm like 
okay, cool, man. <laughs> Get out there, dude. He's like, like I don't know what to expect. <laughs> yeah. I was like, all I'm going to do is try not to flip this thing on the start line. But what did I try to do? <laughs> try to flip that motherfucker on the start line. And the, all, the whole time when he's racing after, you know, when you had to swap that shield for the clear one, all you see is his cheeks get bigger and bigger and bigger because he's just in there smiling, dude. It dude, gnarly. it's such a fucking adrenaline rush. Yeah. Because, like, like I was saying earlier, it's like you fuck up a corner, you got two minutes to figure it the fuck out. You know, you're trying to do that, do that, do that, but you're also thinking, like, this, this is how I go. I just think about it. I'm like, no, nah, if I take that and I go into it a little bit harder, I turn a little bit later, I'll come out that apex and I can hit that next corner better. And it's just, it, until you do it, it's kind of hard to explain it where yeah. you're at, but it's like, but you're also ripping or, you know, sometimes that messes you up when you're like, after you blow one corner, you blow a whole fucking track and you're just like, get out of your groove. Or, and that's when I went in the pit that one time and I shook my hands and I just, all right, let's yeah. go back to zero. Usa. Fucking that. And then I went out there and I fucking laid down my best time of the day. Yeah, you nice. know? And like, What do you, so after doing this, like, how do you, what do you move forward to? I mean, how do you, where do you even begin? Like, obviously you're not going to be able to get that other bike done before this next race. So that's uh, more of a long term project. Biggest, that biggest you need thing to... I want to do, you know, if I do it with, you know, the travel bike again, because now I fucking crashed it. And everything, so. <laughs> <laughs> Might as well. <laughs> but uh, I, feet need to get higher. I need more. I need more lean. Um, you know, even uh, Tucker with his bike, how it was and set up, he was still dragging primary. You know, that's the biggest thing. Uh, one of the biggest things that these guys are, um, you know, and these like even the even the, Bob. GP, the GP guys, yeah, yeah and Bob. Um, Dragon primary, so some people are doing belt drive primaries and keeping them really thin, them and then mm -hmm. um, exhaust, you know, so that's why you see a lot of them, you know, their exhaust is tucked in or, you know, next to the frame, and then by the time it gets up by the rear suspension, and they kick it up by the bag, because it's all about the lean angle, so yeah. if I, uh, you know, for the next race, like, definitely, I got a high mid set up I want to build, it works in my mind, we'll see if it works on, uh, in, like, real life. You know, because if I do it, it'll be interchangeable. Yeah, I should. Well, I know like, you talked about doing that, but let's 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 talk about this build though. That you're gonna you're gonna do this bike. This you got another frame. Don't talk too much. I've been, I've been, I've been, I've been uh, collecting parts. parts. Yeah, but I think that right now is the prime time to like. You've already done the race. Yeah. Uh, I so, mean, so like you know, with, before I went to the race, like. I had, you know, that DTF carbon front fender. I have uh, a dash. I have a tank. I have tank guts. Um, Steve Yonkin blew up that 124 M8. Um, it ate a cam bearing, so I bought that from him. And then I bought a case half on eBay. You know, that was the case half that was destroyed. So I'll need a transmission. And then unless I run a stock swing arm, I have a stock swing arm. But, you know, I'll need a swing arm of some sort, exhaust. And then, I don't know, I'll probably, I kind of want to not run it on a Harley ECU, put it on like a Max ECU, and then just have bare bones wiring. I mean, just straight race bike it, yeah. you know, like mm -hmm. go for an outer fairing with a clear little windshield so I can get tucked and get behind it. Because like, even mine, like I was tucked, you know, but it's, I still had the gauges up top, so I still had like... You know, I was he, like, raced, well, yeah. he raced with his keys, his cigarette, his wallet, a jacket, his lighter, every like as if he dude, was I, like I going shit, on the road. I'd shit in the bag. Yeah. 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 Like, <laughs> I'd pull up, I'd, I'd pull up, then I'd go to put that. I'd like, you know what? Yeah, normally, hat, do, like, like, normally do on the road, you pull the hat off. You throw it was the in the saddlebag during the race. Put it in the I ran out of cigarettes. I'm like, he comes into the pit. I into the pit. I ran out of cigarettes. I'm like, hey Steve, you got a smoke? He's like, yeah, sure, right here. In the mic. Hell yeah. You never know, bro. That's awesome, man. But yeah, like. So then I have the 17s on my bike. So like, I'll just probably put the 18, 19 back on, you know, the teal bike and then put the 17s on the race bike. And, you know, I don't have anything for a front end yet. So, um, but. Man, I don't know, I'm, man. I, I feel like you could reach out to some people and start, you know, because there's a lot. There's so many hint, people. Hint, wink, wink, wink. Yeah, wink. there's so many people <laughs> that, that haven't, that, that I know would like to have an involvement in it mm -hmm. and would help you out. I'll do, I'll do your paint if you get a real fucking race bike. I ain't painting that shit. <laughs> you already fucked that up. <laughs> that shit needs to be stripped. No, that shit's staying how it is. I don't care. It's yeah, leave that one alone. But if you actually it get some... Be, it give me my trip by... We need a race team name. Also. We thought about that. Yeah. So I, I... When they first brought all this shit up, I was, like, interested. And I was like, man, I wonder... Because I don't know what I can offer. I, I, I could probably help solve some problems, yeah. right? Even if it ends up being some kind of financial gain here or financial investment here and there to help out with some kind of expenses around the track. But at the same time, like, 
I feel like every company right now is probably going to want to get on board. I think that with guys like yourself and many others that jump on the track, they they now have they have a lot of people that they can work with now and figure out like okay, well we want to have our foot in this. Right. Guys like you have your foot in it. Yep. You have a bike to build. Mm-hmm. Like I have a solid foundation right yeah. now. Yeah. You know, so and then get my machinist to make a better swing arm. Dude, I fucking I want that same one. Yeah, yeah. that same one. On, well, I mean, not better like 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 that. like that one's great, but you know, what can you do different to yeah. make it better than what it already is? Yeah, you know, and you especially know? with having my bike set up how it is, and then running out there how I did. Like I have a good baseline of what it needs, and then you know, like as I walk through the pits and I look at bikes, I'm looking at the shit that you know. I didn't care about their paint. Right. I'm looking at, all right, where did you scrape? What did you do? How high is your rear? Mm-hmm. What wheels you run? What brakes you got? You know, and then I just you talk to them and be like, hey, how do the brakes feel? They, they added a go, they choppy because you I know, was in there like an FBI agent. Like nobody knew I was really with Steve until at the end, so I'm like snapping things with the <laughs> tourists. I'm like stealing <laughs> secrets and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> we got we got Alex on here and Alex uh, works at House of Harley, so they're in the oh, they're in the market yeah. of giving people bikes. So what's up, Alex? Let's get my boy a bike. <laughs> hey, I feel like I, uh, I feel like I approved a little bit this weekend. So maybe yeah, you, dude, he was, dude, he was battling it with Pistol Pete's bike, which is which, also the same guy who runs in the MotoGP. So well, no, not MotoGP. Or I'm sorry, not the no, MotoGP, bagger the G- Bagger well, GP. He so Pistol Brick brought or Pistol Pete brought two bikes, two bikes, four motors, five bikes, three of them were for show. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I mean this dude brought all. <laughs> I mean, crazy. apparently. Nuts. They're making some money up there. Was it Minnesota area or some shit like that? Which is dope. It's it, what he what he brought to the table. It's badass. But you know, you show up with a fucking easy up that didn't even have your name on it. Nope. We didn't. No, we didn't even have an easy up. We borrowed one. Yeah. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't even have a place to sleep. He, didn't, he was like, he was like literally, he was like, I'm just gonna go ahead and lay down in the back of your truck. I'm like, dude, sleep in the tent. <laughs> But I don't know. I'm gonna work on it, and then I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna try to get the name out there a little bit with, uh, you know, maybe see if we can get some some sponsorships towards it. I think it, it shouldn't be hard, man. Yeah. I think yeah. that they if they want to if they want to play this game. I mean, that's what it is. I yeah. mean, I know that a lot of the industry right now is uh, scrambling for parts. Yeah, you know, there's a big shortage of parts. So you people out there that are mad that something's not showing up, that's because there's nothing, right? right. Nope. Material costs have gone up. Like, yeah. I know that. Like, you know, yeah, with the side covers. covers yeah. Like, just material costs is through the roof. You know, talking machinist people, you know, like yeah. what would cost them 50 bucks now cost them 80 bucks. You know, like that all, that all that compiles. Up, dude. Yeah. You know, if they take a $50 part or something that they're using $50 material and then next thing you know, their price almost doubles on it, you know, it goes up freaking 60%. Like, that's a big deal. It's a big change. Yeah, yeah Bob you know? even had problems getting gaskets just to reseal his motor. I heard I heard there was an issue with gas. I think Kometic is out of gaskets right now. Yeah. From what I heard. I think it's all on Amazon though. Eat I think it. Amazon hoarded out and Eat they bought it. everything. <laughs> so everything's in an Amazon sellers. warehouse right now across America. Well, so we saw an Amazon uh, truck broke down, so that's probably where it's at. <laughs> Can we talk about our road trip? Our road trip? trip? <laughs> <laughs> Dude. <laughs> Let's get to that. That's the <laughs> I, got a, I got a great part. We're like rolling through Utah. And I'm like that. And there's this car like half in the dirt. And it's like headlights are pointed at us. And it's on an angle. And I'm like. And it's not what? the middle of the night. This is the middle yeah, of the day. the middle of the day. I'm like, what in the fuck? And as we pull up, this dude is leaned up against this thing, taking a shit on the side. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was like, was he just pooping? And like, I'm driving like, yep. <laughs> <laughs> After we almost ate Taco Bell. <laughs> that's what he did. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely what he did. I don't did. know. I just had to lay that out there. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> no, but uh, first how, how was the drive up there? The like, Velvet Taco. what was the conversation? <laughs> We'll get there. Well, dude, this motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. So, like, we get in it, and his, his truck, trailer, whatever, and then uh, we left at, like, 6 p.m. by the time we got loaded up, everything, and he drives first couple tanks and everything, and then it's, like, getting, I'm like, hey, you want me to drive? Oh, no, I'm going to go another one. The motherfucker drives a full 1,300 miles there straight. He, like, doesn't even let me drive. I sit in the passenger sleeve. I, I, I don't sleep that good in that. But. Yeah, I stopped for uh, cigarettes. 
Red Bull and beef jerky. And I don't think we, uh, <laughs> dude, I don't think uh, we turned on the radio for the first six hours. You yeah. know, you ever get in that, like, road trip? Dude, it's been so long since I've been on a car road trip. I'm always on a bike and by myself yeah, yeah. in my own head. And I was like, I talked to somebody. <laughs> we tell stories. Yeah, usually, you, usually when you do that, you're like, man, we just did, like, four awesome podcasts. Yeah. yeah. You know yeah, what we, I'm saying? We got to sharing all kind of secrets yeah. with each other. <laughs> yeah, that. And then, uh, oh, what was I going to say? Fuck, I don't know. And then uh, we stopped yeah, at that weird Area 51 beef jerky place. Oh, yeah. That was kind of cool. The yeah, that, uh, that, you know, those, I got, I, I would imagine, like, you're, you don't know what to expect when you get there, right? Like, I don't, what's going to be like? What's right. the entry going to be like? like? I was kind of freaking out with him. Like, yeah, because like, I have to that, know Because, like, dude, <laughs> we showed up early, yeah. you know, but I was like, I don't want to be that last second fucking person that doesn't know what the fuck's going on. Everybody's prepared. You know, I was like, we ended up getting there. You know, Thursday midday, nothing was happening until Friday. Friday was just a tech inspection. That was you it. You know, so, like, we were there early enough, and we went through the night. Like, we could have stopped and got there at, like, 8 o'clock the next night and been mm -hmm. fine, you know. But, I like, I didn't know. So, like, I didn't want to chance anything. I was, like, fucking trailer tire blows out, truck tire blows yeah. out. Like, yeah, we had a I lot don't, of time. I was, to like, I don't, <laughs> I don't want to chance any of this shit and look like a fucking school. Like, it's called responsibility. You, yeah. didn't, you were being responsible. Yeah. So, but that, that's that feeling. Then another thing, is, <laughs> dude, I got it from so many people. They're like, I'm surprised you didn't ride there. I'm like, motherfucker. I was so excited to just throw my bike in a trailer yeah. and just be like, it's done. I don't need to fuck with it and change wheels yeah. and tires once I'm there. The problem that's is if you, you ride it there and then you do blow the motor, then right. or crash. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, so it was cool. Yeah. It was cool. I don't know. Dude, I'm still surprised at that motor. What, that 124? That you rebuilt, what, a year and a half ago? Two years ago? Uh, winter, yeah, winter a year and a half ago. No, well, last year. 65,000 miles. 20, no, 2020. Oh, the whole bike. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So the 124 on that um, has 47,000 miles on it. Yeah. And then when I rebuilt it, like, rebuilt, I literally just pulled it out. I sent the crank out, welded, straightened. I didn't even change the bearings in the case. I just kept the same bearings and I bolted it back together. And then I looked at the hash marks on the cylinders and I didn't even change the rings. I was like, those look good. And I put it back together and, and you rode it to last year. We did some really big trips last year. You did yeah. a huge one. Yeah. My Sturgis trip is like 7,200 miles. Um, you know, I did the fast life camp out right after I got yeah. the thing right after I built it, yeah. you know, I maybe had 60 miles on it and then I sent it all the way down here and I lost a derby cover bolt was the only problem that I had. Mm -hmm. Um, we did but, New York together last year. Yeah. New York. Um, I did a, a tail of the dragon trip last yep. year. Yep. Um, you did one this year or no, you went to Tennessee too. Yeah. And so then, this year, uh, was Tennessee. Yep. Fast life. What's fast life came out? It's not that much. It's like 500 miles. But after fast life, I went all the way up to Branson yeah. by myself, and then or with Kyle and them, mm -hmm. I came home by myself. Yeah, shit. I don't know. Dude. Daytona. Oh, that was on the. Uh, the Daytona other was on the skinny bag. Yeah. Fuck, dude. I've, I've, yeah, because that was another thing. Because like they're on the announcement speaker and like Brian Clock from Clockworks. He's like, yeah, Steve Chamberlain made it out here with his fucking bike with 64,000 miles on nice. it. <laughs> Daily rider, literally. Yeah, that's what's cool about it, man. It's like you can. Do I it. didn't. I didn't. Wheels and tires was the biggest change I did to it. I just wanted sticky tires, so I went with the seventeens. Yeah. Which and the, the reason why people go with seventeens is because you get better tire you options. You get the sport bike tires. You yeah. Know? But there's people in my class that were just running on cruise decks and shit like that. But I don't know. I didn't like. At the time, I just that's what I wanted, you know. Yeah. So, and now I have like. So I, I've, I got all the cruise techs on mine right now, and I ran them to Maine and back. I actually want to talk to those guys and, you know, get them on the podcast because apparently the new cruise tech is like something they put a lot of effort into redesigning it so that you kind of have the longevity of a, of a commander too, but way more sticky. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, so. It's funny when we got there, I asked Steve, I was like, "Hey, just service your bike." He's like, "It's got oil in it." <laughs> I'm like, rad, let's go. <laughs> That's awesome. What was, the, what was the last trip I did? I don't know. Tony's. Tony's? I yeah, changed, I, did, I did like a, a three hole right before Tony's. So before I like safety wire the dipstick, I pulled it out and I was like, all right, there's oil on the stick. And I stuck it back in there and put some safety wire on it. Well, it wasn't like you were riding to yeah. so the deal. Yeah, so. I, I think I did over 100, 100, mile, miles, yeah. 100 miles on that on track. The track. I ain't bad. Damn, that's a lot. It's yeah, a 2.2 yeah. mile track. 2.2 right? miles. So I, I think I've did at least 50 laps on that fucking track. 
Dude, it fucking takes it out of you. Like, every time I got off. So, how are you feeling about here now and the track days they have in Texas? Are you going to try to be a part of those? I like it, dude. Like they're they're saying it's an addiction. Like, yeah. And it's just like, well, it was cool. So, like, out there that was on the itinerary was like a track walk. So, like, one night, the first night we were there, we were like, all right, you know, everybody got set up and we started going on a track walk Sneak by walk. ourselves. That wasn't like Sneak that. Walk. And then we uh, got kicked out. Yeah. You know, <laughs> we got uh, about to the fourth turn and then they're like, who said you could be out here? So we got kicked out. But then they let everybody go on a, a track walk. So then it's like, you see the shit that you don't see at speed, you know, that speed bump I was telling you about. And just, you're thinking about corners. You're like, all right, if I come out of this one, do I want to apex it here? Like, you can kind of do it because shit starts going fast it's like when you're on the track it's not like i can just go on there like 10 miles an hour and just you know you're in your ass packed you know like you go out there and you fucking race when you're on the track like yeah you yeah. know so that was cool that's awesome man i was uh i was i was excited to see all the other bikes like i said the seeing the kind of shit they were building for the gp class or the the premier bagger class um I wonder how that's going to trickle down. I know that when I was at Alloy Art, did the podcast with those guys, they were working on that front end that they just released, I guess. They, I don't okay. know if it's released to sure. buy. I think it's, like, announced. I don't know. I could be wrong. But what they were doing is I think they were working with a GP suspension for the internals and that thing, and they were building something that was supposed to – man, I can't remember because we don't think we talked about it on the podcast with Alloy Art, but those dudes, when I was there, that bike that, that they raced, like – they had that thing on the lift, and they were fucking doing so much shit to that to work it out and figure it out and do this and do that. I mean, they're really out there. They were they were one of the ones. I didn't get to go into a lot of other shops, but I know them for sure was putting in the effort to figure out how to make this shit better. Right, because you know like I mean? even on the first King of the Baggers, like what I noticed, you know, like they had rear sets on it, and then they had like the shifter hanging way down. And like I was looking at it, and you know, I'm not talking shit by saying this. I was looking at it, I was like. You're going to drag that rear set before you're going to drag that primary. You know, just like, yeah, I get it. Your feet are up there or whatever. But I was like, I was looking at it. Then halfway through the day or whatever, like, they, I see stuff on their story. <clears throat> they're cutting the fucking shifter in half with a fucking cutoff wheel. And, you know, because they're like, it's dragging on the yeah. ground. And none of But that's the shit you learn once you get, once out, you there. get out there. Yeah. You, can look at, you can look at a bike all you want on a lift and be like, it's perfect. Like, HPI with that one bike, they did the last exhaust and they're like, they had it high and tight as they can go. And then they're like, we need it higher. And then now it goes through the fucking bag, you know, mm. like, yeah, it'd be, you, do you have ideas to yourself? Like on this other, you know, bagger, like what you would do, like fabricate your own shit. I mean, you've been doing the side covers for a while and you have a little bit of those skills. I, yeah. I, I don't say a little bit, like that's all you got. I'm just saying like you have skills in, mm-hmm. in cutting, welding, shaping figuring the shit out so are your bearings like turning as to what you can create yourself absolutely you know like i i guess it's hard until like i'm not always a perfect like person that sketches that something out before i do it it's like all right start to work with what we got and then make the best of what we have you know because you can have a hundred thousand dollar thing in that and whatever, or you can be like, I did this for 15 and can still be competitive. Like mm-hmm. sometimes I always kind of just go over to that little bit cheaper price and try to be competitive. Might sacrifice a little bit here and there because mm-hmm. I can't afford to be the best of the best, you know, like, but yeah. I can fucking try to do the best with what I have. You know, that's like how my shit, when I set it up, when I went out there this last time, I was like, will it be the best? No, I know the bike, you know, other people's bikes are more capable, you know, but I'm dragging my floorboard mounts, my floorboards. Like, do I wish I had mids on it? Yeah. Yeah. I had all the shit that I wanted to do what I wanted to do to build my mids, but I didn't have the time, you know, before I went. Did you ever feel like you didn't have enough power? Um, not on that, that short of the track. Like, I guess on the straightaway, like I just, I guess I wish the bike was lighter. Um, but through most corners, like you could lift your leather jacket out of the bag. (laughs) (laughs) Solid five pounds. (laughs) Um, just on the straightaway, like, I don't know. I feel like with more lean, like it was, it had plenty of power. You Mm. know, it's a hard, like an enemy on that track from what I understand. For real. Yeah. Yeah. Listen to everybody talk. Yeah. yeah, it's a 124 horse, 142 foot pounds torque is what my bike makes. Mm-hmm. Or at least it did about 20. But well, almost, it, <laughs> it almost feel like if you just like kind of do what Trast did, like you put so much power to it, then you're kind of pushing other parts to failure. Right. 
You know you what I mean? You, they're out there. They're over 200 horse. And they're blowing fucking transmissions left and right. And fucking, yeah. So maybe the, you know, the sweet spots may be in that 160, 180 yeah. range. And that's what we talked about at the track with people is like, all right, you know, we're going to figure out what the point is, you know. And be like, oh, I got a thousand horsepower bike, you know, like, you know what I mean? Like, like all right, so that's <laughs> like not usable, like right. fucking whatever. And it's like, yeah, try to, you know, it's like one. This isn't drag cool. racing, dude. Yeah. Right. You know, yeah. Is 160 cool? Will 160 pop you out of the corner? It's apparently drag racing is performance baggers too, by the way. Oh, yeah. Well, well right. the Lucky Speed Shop bike was a uh, stock motor, just had like cams and, or, yeah, that was like pretty much it and exhaust, but like the internals were in like, wow. You know, Twin cam too, right? Yeah. I want to rate it. Dude, that kid that fucking wrote it. Uh, He's such a cool fucking dude, dude I, man. I, I <laughs> love Danley, whatever. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Danley FTW on Instagram. Fucking dude, that motherfucker. Like, we got done. And we didn't have, like, that was a fucking race. Because, like I was saying earlier, like, I mean, we were battling. Like, he said I when I passed him, because, like, I had the power and I, I got a pass on him. Shit. He's like, you scared the fuck out of me. Because <laughs> like at that point, you're just so focused on the person in front of you. Yeah, you don't think like I had wheelie pick past me a couple times. You know, just, he was pretty fast. And yeah, shit. he was a lot faster yeah. than I. I guess to not give him his due credit because when he raced the first time we saw him, he was on the track with fucking all those high level guys, right? Yeah. But. No, that motherfucker Dude can, can ride, man. That yeah. motherfucker can ride because it was yeah. like, you know, he'd go past me and I'd try to try to keep up. And then I was just running out of ground clearance. And yeah, you know, I haven't seen like, yeah, him like, you know, seeing him scrape the ground. And he had mm-hmm. his, I think, speed merchant mids and fucking that and dragging his primary around the corner. He's just fuck keeps gating on me. You know, I think his lap times were five seconds faster than what I could do. It's going to be very interesting to see how they solve the primary issue. And once that's solved, I think that really truly opens up the door yeah. with all this shit. If they I mean, would let people modify their frame, it would solve all those problems. Yeah, but you, you got to have a limit right. somewhere. Right, 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 of course. I think yeah. the yeah, so there was some people talking shit on the actual, uh, uh, the, the, the live feed about, so do you know about this? I'm just going out there because I don't know anything about it. Are they limiting how much displacement the indians can have versus um, oh yeah, only so. on the water cooled that's what i'm saying so on the like water you cooled. do you do an air cooled indian you can go up to 131 cubic inch just like i think yeah, yeah i'm pretty sure yeah i guess in that i but think that's what i heard too on water cooled like that's a whole different dynamic of a motor exactly like whatever then like some people oh, it's only 107 cubic inch 107 cubic inch water cooled like your fucking car outside or if you want to go and take your Toyota Camry. It revs so much higher than a... Your Toyota Camry versus a fucking Volkswagen Bug that's air-cooled. Like, you know... It's different. No, it's different. Like, the tolerance of the motor, the way they make power, they're different. I'll be honest with you. That's why I'm really hoping that Harley considers putting that new motor in the touring chassis. But make it bigger. But make it bigger. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Fuck just making a 1250. Let's make a fucking 2,000cc water-cooled Like a man. (laughs) <laughs> but then it'll just suck because like half the people out there will just crash it because they don't know how to ride it more parts for us <laughs> <laughs> let's be real that's how it was in the sport bike days but at, at the same time I, I mean I think that uh, the year that the Challenger came out was the year before technically yeah. the pandemic so maybe maybe that gave Harley the kind of delay they needed to do the R&D to really step up what we're all hoping they do with their their frames with their motors you know something right to be a real competitive to a real com- competitor towards the challenger like don't be wrong like everybody knows i hate the fucking indian i don't hate it i just i'm a harley guy that's right. let's just be clear right. i'm a harley guy i don't hate the bike it's fun to talk shit just like everybody talks shit about sportsters it's part of it right <laughs> but what I do enjoy and what I love is that I love seeing the fact that like those bikes do rip. Mm-hmm. They do. They are out there putting. I mean, Tyler O'Hare. Was, Tyler right? O'Hare. Yeah. He's he's been killing like every race, and then I guess he had a, you know, they were chasing problems or something on, on the last race. Uh, and then this one, I don't know. Maybe he just you know the. Yeah, well, the last day. race, fucking the HPI bike pretty much blew up the whole fucking their primary. Jimmy was telling me. Yeah. You know, it was like the clutch, fucking everything. He said, like, the crankshaft was still good in the transmission shaft, but everything in the primary just poof. Yeah. So, you know, so, this stuff's so new, man. Like, a, right? like it's... um. And that's what's so fucking cool, cool about it to me. It. Yeah. It's, like, just watching this shit grow. Like, you... We go out there and, like... 
we're judging bikes just how people built them and then they you know they go out like the cruisy bike or like that's a low lowering fucking swing arm and then they go out there and just smash on motherfuckers yeah. with it you know like all right that worked you know like would i mount it to the stock struts like how it's supposed to be done you know aluminum cast strut i don't know but with his little steel under frame that he did yeah i'm fine with it you know what's this dude talking about what about the engines from the limited with the radiator in the fairings those, those are like barely a water cool. That's not it's, the same type of water cool, yeah, bro. No, it's uh, not oil, even close. Oil and water cool. Yeah, it's so like old. Yeah. Next question, please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the reason why the the Indian looks the way it looks, same way the V Rod looked the way it looked, is that uh, they don't use any air cooling on the thing. They don't have any fins. They don't have any of that shit. Yeah. It's all and the fins that are on there are cosmetic. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, uh, yeah, it's not even the same. Like. Yeah, it's the it, same thing. The new motor. This shit's just for traffic and whatnot. Yeah. Like yeah, on the yeah. limiteds, like, you know. It's to help keep it cool in parade mode, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Soft support, yeah. But, dude, I'm I'm stoked to just see where this fucking, uh, this gets taken. Yeah. You know, with the innovation and shit. Like, you know, seeing, you know, like you were just talking about the alloy arts, new, new legs that they're coming out with and stuff that's actually more geared to like the harley thing like we're all running the 17s it's cool yeah i wish i had the same tire for my 19 yeah you were saying like, that i wish you could have left i like the way the, the fucking bike felt a little bit but then it's like i lost three quarter of an inch of ground clearance and then i was really oh. like i was really suffering on like i was so used to that like how it felt in before like it tip into a corner pretty easy yeah but sometimes i'd feel like i'd over tip it so i don't know that makes I'm sense i'm still getting used to it but. yeah it makes perfect sense, man. What I really Fun. enjoyed was just seeing normal, everyday dudes on normal, everyday bikes that they were just out there ripping. In a sense, you almost got to give credit to the Harley industry because even though the the parts aren't quite ready for right. full track, right? they made it work. It's pretty close. Yeah, they made it work. Like, it was pretty close. A couple things to make his bike spec ready or tech ready. He did it like in the middle of the night, like last minute. Yeah, like just the fucking the, the shit that the shit that people are doing on them. Like they're surprising the fuck out of some people. Yeah, I'm like all right, you got your sport bike guys, and then you get these guys that are actually geared towards it. And next thing you know, they're fucking throwing on the lap times they are. Yeah. Like you know, freaking even I'm just talking like the big twin guys, the guys on the fucking Dynas. Like, dude, that was a competitive ass class. Like, them guys were fucking ripping. They never quite got the wobble sweets. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I saw some wobbles. I saw a lot of wobbles. That's why that guy went out. Yeah. I was gonna say, yeah, there's a there's a couple crashes. Yeah. Yeah. There's a couple crashes in every practice other than I don't think the G uh, Bagger G P had any crashes. Mm -hmm. no, I watched like there. one two, two one motor blow up. You know, I was just like it it's just out that and I saw it started smoking. I think there was one did not start on the, the bagger GP. Mm. I don't know which bike Even it the, was. Well that one uh, orange sports during the Julian class wouldn't start and they were just bump starting it. Just going out there trying to go race. That's yeah. what it was all about, just trying to race. I mean, you put up so much effort to get there. Right. It's the same thing when we're traveling across the country, right? right? And you have an issue. It's like you got to ask yourself, am I am I dead in the water here or is there a chance? Right. And if there's a chance, then it's Take it's it. the same. It's got to be the yeah. same exact yeah. feeling yeah. as it is when five of your boys are on the side of the road trying to figure out how to get your shit to the next stop. That's exactly what it was. People were yeah. running around in golf carts. Hey, man, I need this. Hey, do you have that? Hey, does anybody know how to fix this? What the fuck is that, nerd? I don't know. This is a, don't know, bots, bots, bro, bots. <laughs> but, yeah. It's exactly what dude's been like, hello. Hello? Hello? Um, fuck. <laughs> I don't know. I got to pee on something. <laughs> on don't something? take a shit like that dude on the side of the road in Utah. Wow. It's kind of weird. <laughs> I'll talk about we something gonna, important. Leave right I will talk so, about how. Let's talk about you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me. Yeah. Yeah, who's, yeah. Who's this guy, and what's your uh, business, and what's your name? And uh, my name is Rennie. Um, I'm with Easy Rider Cycle, which is just me. <laughs> now nah, I'm just uh, just a normal every guy, everyday guy who likes to uh, fuck with FXRs. I've uh, come around, hung out, met some cool people, and so I'm continuing to do, man. Just trying to build uh, on my dream. What uh, what got you into motorcycles? Ooh. Good question. That's a deep one. Um, growing up in Daytona. So I was born in Austin, Texas, um, but I grew up in Daytona Beach. So 
not the best uh, financial upbringing, but my mother did her best. And instead of going to Disney World, we went to uh, Bike Week in Daytona. Hey. <laughs> so I'd always that's see everybody it. out there with the flashy chrome, and that's kind of my style is the chrome style and, you know, nice hot color paint and stuff. And I don't know. I just enjoy Harley's. Um, yeah, that's why. That's what's up, man. First bike? My first bike? Street bike? Yeah, street mm. bike. <clears throat> Did you say mini bike? I'm like, XG. <laughs> it was an XG that 750. Thing had a fucking <laughs> 2015. <laughs> <laughs> My first bike bike was, uh, I don't know, it got stolen in Austin. It was like a bicycle. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, my brother had a little, uh, growing up, fucking had his pedally bike stolen. Like, I think this is before I was born or fucking before I could think for my own self. But I had my, dude, fuck, had my fucking like mongoose week, got stolen, stolen, dude. Oh, mongoose? I, when, yeah, I had a badass mongoose. Three-piece crank. Three-piece crank. I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Back in the day, they were like, the three-piece cranks are way stronger. Dude, like, how, are you how bad to one piece? Yeah. How relevant is that to our shit nowadays? <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> well, that dude with that lucky speed bike was out there on his... Uh, Big Ripper just doing wheelies the whole time. The whole, and the whole time he's just going by with his bicycle doing wheelies going, let's go fast, bro. Let's go fast. Go fast, bro. I'm just trying to go fast. <laughs> that dude's a character, bro. Dude. <laughs> Fucking deadly. That dude's a character. Yeah. So what was the, uh, did you have to pay to enter the race? Um, yeah. So the way, like, the pay scale went, um, everybody kind of needed a transponder. So a transponder <laughs> rental was, like, 25 bucks. You didn't have one. Um, that gives you their, your lap times and shit. And then for all the races up other than the Bagger GP was um, three hundred bucks to enter. Okay. The Bagger GP was a thousand dollars to enter for some reason. Um, sponsorship money probably. Um, and then the maybe ride, even payouts for for winnings and I stuff. I thought they said something about five G for the winner. Of, that would make uh, sense. You know that like. No, no other classes got it. Just the bagger GP yeah. got the payout, and then um, the rider school they got you for three hundred. So yeah. you know, so for me it was six hundred twenty-five bucks. But you know, next time hopefully just three hundred bucks. So that's but pretty cool. Three hundred bucks. That's fair yeah. for the yeah. two days of ripping and freaking whatever. And so you technically have the license you need now to continue to go into the other ones. I hope so. Yeah, that's awesome. Hope I paid for the right one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I did the class, took the test. I went out and raced. I started in eighth and I ended in eighth and didn't take anybody out. So that was pretty cool. Yeah, that's awesome. And I was, dude, I was having a blast. Like, it was fucking, oh, like, literally 20 hour ride home. All I'm thinking about is like, oh man, I could have took that corner better. I could have yeah. just done this. I could have done that. So that's why I, where I think people get you on the addiction. You're like, you know you can do better. You know you can set your bike up better. You know you can, I don't know. So with the uh, them coming to Texas, or we don't know yet, do oh, we know really? which track it's going to be, Austin or the one up here by Fort Worth? It feels Austin like, would be dope because I would ride to the track. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You <laughs> can get some major practice Have like, laps, have like no headlights and no taillights on the bike. And I feel like, I mean, I, I, I hate to be skeptical, but I feel like, crescent which is down over here in southwest fort worth it feels like more of a manageable track to get um to get you know to, to basically take the track over for the entire yeah. time frame it's going to be needed and i would imagine that uh you know coda is such a huge track and it's so fucking new mm -hmm. and there's so many things that take place on that track all the time or you know not. Um, I don't know. I could be wrong. I just I'm just kind of throwing that out there that maybe they would be able to have more control over the track for the entire weekend through yeah. uh, doing like a crescent. crescent. Yeah. yeah. And I trust mean, me, it make my drive and my <laughs> participation so much better. <laughs> All about me. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But no, yeah, like I, way, I, like Texas would be dope because then it's like you might get a little bit more East Coasters. Um, I don't know how many people, you know, came from the East Coast. But like see, at the Bob same time. Was, Bob was Ohio. He was a We saw, I heard a couple people from Ohio over there. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, like, maybe they're still trying to nail this down, but they really need to announce that because there's not a lot of time between now and September. Right. No matter where they end up doing this, even if they did it back there again. Yeah. You know? Just, dude, the area the track was in, that was cool. Utah, Utah, sweet. First time going through there? 
Uh, I've been in Utah, I guess. This is like my first time, like, I guess being stopped towards Salt Lake City. Yeah. Most of the time it's just like a drive through. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that area's dope, man. Yeah, it's cool, dude. Just waking up in the morning and, like, literally wherever Why'd you have to pray? <laughs> <laughs> It was funny. They did a prayer at the beginning of the the video thing to make sure please, everybody was please, okay. Lord. People were wrecking. Dude. <laughs> He's like, make sure these. What these if man? Love my God race. was the one there. Well, we were in Utah, which is like you know Mormon. Country. <laughs> is that like in the ceremonies? <laughs> it was. Yeah. No, oh, dude, I was like, I was suited. up. It was so funny. I was suited up in a fucking helmet. It was like a little right kid. I was race. the first race, like, yeah. and I'm like, I wish I had somebody to go before me, so I know how this goes. But <laughs> yeah, it was funny because like uh, they said that everybody take off their hats, and like everybody's in the back still having conversations and all this shit. Yeah, I was like, on live <laughs> TV with my cowboy head off, like. <laughs> Texan buddy, yeah. Steve made me wear the hat, FYI, because <laughs> I gave mine away. It's got speed holes in it. It does. A little air out. <laughs> but yeah, they need uh, they need to announce when the next next one is. They want to continue. And to I think hype. I think yes. to the also I think a lot of people we know why they use that chick for the uh, for the uh, announcements or the 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 host basically on the on the actual live event. We get it. She's a hot chick, right? But let's be real. Marshall Tucker would have been the fucking Dude, man. Marshall on was that. killing it during the Dude, show. I was, for I was looking at his stories and his post as, like, my connection to what's going on. The dude, dude's I, just... Yeah, and that's the first time I was time so I happy to, to see him out dude, there. Like, yeah. I he he I fucking makes it, you dude. happier. Yeah. I haven't seen him since, like, the drag specialty show. It's like been a while because he had that accident, remember? Yeah. yeah. So it was like he had that... Yeah, after, about that. Like that, COVID started, and then he had that accident during COVID, and then freaking... Uh, Whatever, um, and then yeah, I think this is my first time seeing him in a long time. They Still the same man. dude. I fucking love him. He hyped up the whole crowd like right. multiple times yeah. during the day, during the stunt. It was funny. The, uh, the sun <laughs> on the uh, chat, on the actual chat that was going on. This is the only part that was funny. That I mean, there was a lot of it was good, but this is the funniest part was the chick that is the custom dynamics rep. She like <laughs> she was high as fuck. <laughs> yeah. She had her shades time. on it, and first. she just was like staying perfectly still. And wouldn't make a move. And it like, seems like a couple of times she tried to reach to do something to her face. And she's like, oh. <laughs> Dude, everybody was. Everybody was yeah. going out there. Oh, a lot of uh, Cali guys out there. So it's, it's what it's about. It, it, was, it, and that's, it was pretty lenient at the track. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> there, Steve yeah. slept on the ground. <laughs> there was one dude in the comments talking about how it was so unprofessional. All these guys. Smoking cigars and drinking beer in the pits and stuff. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, I remember saw that guy. Shut don't the put, fuck <clears throat> up. don't put everybody underneath the bus, bro. Yeah, like they'll get it. Cigars are cool. Yeah, so is beer drinking. That's what this is all about, guys. Have fun. We're Harley guys. We're Harley guys. Yeah, <laughs> you think you're gonna invite, <laughs> you're gonna invite a bunch of Harley guys to a track and have them be all fucking proper and shit? Yeah. 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 You think all the hell yeah brothers are gonna be out there racing? <laughs> what, they, what they should hope is that beer sponsors start to chime in and start because that's yeah. where the real money ends up coming yeah. in we talked about when, when fucking sponsors. dude <laughs> yeah <laughs> when, you know we talked about this uh, i think we talked about me and you were with uh burt baker yeah. at the baker podcast he was talking about how in the 90s and the early 2000s cigarette companies and beer companies helped create the big industry we had right then because they were funneling money into sponsoring events and shows and Marvel. things like that whatever happened to that I think that cigarettes were not allowed to make to advertise anymore anything that might have kids, kids around yeah. it. That's why the Camel Guy and the Marble Man and all that stuff. Yeah, and then as far as beer, they don't want to associate alcohol with racing or with racing. I think right. just riding in general. It's but do they of, with Harley racing? <laughs> because yeah. I won't make some motherfucking emails. Especially with like I, I NASCAR. Like, mm -hmm. Um, Doesn't um, NASCAR like have fucking? They used to have like Miller Lite and fucking. Coors they gotta Light. still have. Those. Dude, on the way up there, yeah. I was like, you should fill Montucky up both Coast saddlebags. Snacks. You want to race White sponsor a race? race. <laughs> Sick ass dude, race bike, dude. dude. Hell yeah! Can you imagine pit the vipers? Can you imagine the fucking paint job? Those you can guys do were out there too, and I got a. Oh, dude. <laughs> Montucky, we're gonna talk. Yeah, I dude. They Montucky does not understand that. Like, so if you look at Montucky's Instagram, right? They're like guys like us. But in different sections of the, in different parts of the, like uh, they do different shit. Like yeah. they snowboard, they do these kind of things. We're just the bikers of that world. But they're yeah. all extreme sports. Yeah, this is an extreme sport. I think it's like the same thing. I think that bikers, when you say, "Yeah, we're we're bikers, we're Harley guys," they mm -hmm. automatically already have an idea of what that looks like to them. And like, ah, we don't know if we want our our this our guy. shit to be. 
can't try to get a sponsorship and then not grab Gives me the Mickey. The next one. There no more? Nope. Last oh. one. Our, uh, the beer they gave us ran out a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> Literally before the camp out, I believe. So Dang this, it. This was a. Uh, those, those hit hard. Those we we spent, I think I had sacks around the store. We, we bought $100 worth of this beer, and this is the last of it from the last four podcasts. So yeah. okay. cheers. Give me another one. <laughs> cheers, guys. Hey, no shotguns this time. Not for 15 bucks. There's 25 this time. I need 10. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, you know, since we added the chat up here, it kind of gets, uh, it gets to a point where you can kind of get um, eight dollars for a tall boy out there at the track. Yeah, I never never bought one, but okay, it was I worth it. I bought two of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like uh, it, it kind of throws you off. That was um, one thing that they fucked up. Like food, 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 food. Like food. dude, they well, what they had. Like Bob kind of had the food, so I didn't really worry. Well, about the only it. food that they had was at the go kart track, but you had to have like you had to be like a paying go kart customer to buy like nachos. Doritos, like any little thing. So I like I used Bob's scooter, right? I went to the back of the track, acted like I was in there, like racing go karts, and got a hot dog. <laughs> yeah. But it's like yeah, it had a in. concession area, but it was just it never opened up. It was never the open. whole weekend. That's yeah. weird. There's so many people walking around. Like, where'd you get food? Like, cause like we were I was walking around with like a breakfast burrito, like that we just made there. And like, dude, so many people are like, "Fuck, no, we don't have no food." And I'm Even like, to get just like water. You, yeah. could, you had to wait till like the beer stand opened at like twelve thirty. So like people walking by, oh, you know. The so how how were they with you with like bringing a, your own cooler and stuff? Um, I guess if you walked through the gate, I had one guy say so he tried to walk through the gate with a cooler, turn him away. But yeah. when we just drove through, but when you're the race team, bro, you got the race rig. Yeah, it's like <laughs> when we drove through, it's not like they stopped us and like checked us. Do you out. have any containers in here? Yeah, like they just. It right, was more yeah. like race pass, and they're like, yep. just just yeah. get out of the way, go. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, it was, so, it was it was it was pretty lenient on everything. They kind of fucked up on the food situation. I think they kind of fucked up on the filming situation by just but they had following a shower. the following the front lines. I feel like they'd get a lot more exposure on everybody if they yeah. would have talked to the people, you know, because it wasn't them running well, anything like that. But like, well, but just show different parts of the crowd, show the so battles. Th this is a thought right. I have. Right, this is just a thought. I'm not saying this is what it is. I just I'm asking you guys. I think because you and and Bob and a lot of these other guys that might not quite have gotten into that five slot or, or, or yeah. closer still have massive amounts of people because they know you guys. Mm -hmm. yep. Now, don't get me wrong. Like A lot of people know who Ben Bostrom is. A lot of people know these other racers. Not in the Harley world. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, this is like with this, it's if they would have showed that 20 second snippet of that, that motherfucker would have shared it on his Instagram, tag Bagger Racing League, and then all his family. Well, so to play devil's one. advocate, what I think that makes sense though is that, like, for, for one end, it does make sense to follow Ben Bostrom in that because that's going to hopefully bring new Harley riders, new, right. or just new V twin riders yes. around. Yeah. But. Is all you know? We already have a massive, massive community that if they tap into it, right? You know, the cruisy people right. behind cruisy. I mean, I, he probably got a lot more footage. That's the only race I didn't get to watch right. was the was the and GP. See, like, I'm not gonna talk shit, right? But like this guy right here, we drove 23 hours. Mm -hmm. At least give this guy something, right? Bob, he drove what 24 with his yeah yeah 24 hours. Give him something. Give everybody who showed up something. I feel like just on the first couple. Yeah. You know, I'm not saying every time. I'm just saying right. these first couple, like, you're looking for exposure the whole time we're there. They're like, hey, tell your buddies to order on, you know, yeah. Fight TV, yeah, blah, blah, blah. This. Just like, and then people did, and then they're like, Where's well, my boy? I, seen, I seen you for the first start when you did a wheelie, and I didn't see you for the rest of the race. Yeah. You know, and it's like, it's kind of a bummer. Like, I was kind of like, all right, you know, like, dude. See, I, also think, I also think, that, so they, they, they tried to have commercials that they would run in between segments. God. <laughs> Which, yeah. So, they they tried to. I I understand. So I'm not trying to talk shit. Right. I understand this is the first one. I'm just saying this is construction criti constructive criticism. What I would have also liked to hear is maybe more. Hey, Steve, what was that like? Right. Like, come around and talk to some of the racers that weren't in the fucking first. We sound like little she, bitches right now. She, well, no, no, <laughs> I mean, but, no, but like, like, dude, we're just trying to improve it. It's yeah. like what what you seen, what I seen with there. Right. If know, we were, I we all wanted to know people, more about racing. We all yeah, we know, did want to. This isn't like you know, this isn't like we're going like NASCAR. We're like we want to see like that. 
one person. It's but like there was this is our community. Like NASCAR size and, we're to, and we're trying to fucking build it, you know, and you're not going to build it off of three people, the top three or like something like yeah. get other people in it. Like make this motherfucker so feel like what I would say is it like some not to take away their riding and, and their wins and and their ability. No, they're fucking the but people after out there sure. after this event's over, you're not going to hear anything about them in the Bagger Racing League until the next race. So your content is going to come from the guys like yourself and Bob and and I mean Tony. They give Tony a lot of credit and a lot of a lot of airtime, and he deserves it. He's, Absolutely, yeah. He's one of the OGs. You know, Zach Nation. They could have gave him a little bit more airtime. I don't For know sure. if they really did. They didn't. Um, but. Hell, even like the other guys you were telling me that you guys have been telling me about, like yeah. why weren't yeah. these guys just the normal everyday yeah. fucking dude? Well, those are the guys who make the race, yeah. believe it or not. Because if these you know guys like him didn't show up, who would you have? Two so guys, what I, I think guys. they should be doing is like a, they should probably have like a liaison. I think is the word to kind of they have introduce. They need a fucking Marshall Tucker. Yeah, they do. Mm-hmm. Who yeah, now the Marshall knows. Tucker that one down there yeah. that says, "Hey man, I need to fucking get an interview from you right now." Is like, cool? You ready? Uh, yeah, I got five minutes. And like, as a middle of wrench and something, he's like, "Yeah, that." And he, just he was pounding the concrete out there, and he was doing it. Everybody. He was doing it for his own shit, everybody. but like, yeah, especially since she interviewed the same people like numerous times. Yeah, like, right. it, like I get it. <laughs> I get it when you don't. You're trying to have a set schedule. You know, you're going to go out there. You're like, all right, so these are the big boys. We're going to do it with just them. The exposure comes from the little guys because the little guys like, oh, my God, homie was on TV. And next thing you know, they're like, oh, that was my best friend. They're like, what? It also validates. What do do? It oh, validates. dude, it makes it Charles, Charles that we went to school with is now racing Harleys right. or whatever. And he was on fucking pay-per-view. Right. Oh, dude, I always knew he would make it. And they, they but it makes it attainable. Like, it grows the know? sport. It gives yeah. everybody yeah. their chance to show up and – Bring what you, bring what yeah. you got. Like you don't have to have this crazy, you know, thirty yeah. foot, you know, whatnot. You can sleep in a tent. Sleep in a tent all. with a sixteen dollars <laughs> sleeping bag. And well, that's it's good it. that like guys like Brian <laughs> Clock knows knows these type of things. And yeah. I mean, I, like I said, I don't want it to sound like we're bagging on them for this, no, this no, first no. event. I yeah, want. No, I just absolutely. want. It was great. I think that the main thing is that um, is that they look at it maybe hear like your guys' voices. Like, look, man, like us spectators want to hear from the people that we follow online that we saw do this, not the yeah. people that are making this thing great. Don't get me wrong. They're bringing something to the table that make this better. But when I hear I'm, Ben brought some sticks out because I know him so long, not know him, but I know of him for so long. He just doesn't have much to add, add to the conversation of Harley Davidson racing other than, yeah, this is fucking weird. You know what right. I mean? Like, you know, like I go out there and I went and spent I don't know three four thousand dollars to fucking between setting my bike up, wheels, tires, fucking all that shit, travel expenses like that, beef jerky, and then like all right, <laughs> I got four seconds airtime. You know, I was like, oh, it was the best four well. seconds airtime I think anybody's <laughs> ever had on any yeah. kind of racing TV. Just you know. he he. What's funny is I made a post on my story. I was like, moves to Texas. Rides as hard like a bull. Because you're just like, <laughs> feet off the peg, just, what? Dude, I fucked up. I was like, I staged with my fucking uh, left foot on. So I was ready to, like, shift in a second, you know? So I, yeah. I only had one on. Just, like, we'll take off, and I'll be ready to bang second by the time I hang my, my other foot up there. But, motherfucker, I need that rear brake. <laughs> dude, the crowd was wild when did that, dude. I was like, that's me. Let's do the first fucking race, dude. Like, <laughs> Let's start this out with a <laughs> That's awesome. I feel like that meme. Uh, what's his name when he's pointing at the TV with the cup? Oh, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah. yeah. Whenever you did the wheel, I was like, <laughs> "That's Craig." <laughs> Dude, yeah, that was that was gnarly. So, other than all this, like, uh, what, what are your final thoughts on the whole event as a whole, and how do you see this thing growing? Like, do you think it's really gonna? Do you see it growing the way it is, or do you think that there's something they can do to help it grow better, faster? Don't charge four hundred dollars to camp. <laughs> <laughs> no, they don't really do that. Well, they try um, the biggest thing, like I said, with, with growing is on these first couple 
give more people exposure, more people exposure, more shares, more of that. Like they're trying to do it with like the word of mouth, but I'm just telling you like, all right, if you're going to have a fucking TV person there, be like, we're not going to do this how we are going to do it with the own thing. And you're only going to like, don't get me wrong. Like following that in the first place. Like that's what it is. It's a 15 minute race or 12 minute race. Like jump around, show fucking everybody like do that. Yeah. And then next thing you know, like people are going to screen record. They're going to do that. They're going to share it. They're going to want it. And they're going to be like, I'm part of it, you know, even though whatever, like that's their biggest thing that kind of like let me down a little bit is I thought they were going to jump around a little bit. Like, you yeah. know, Cause you guys um, bad one, man. and even on the last lap, they had the camera on third, fourth and fifth. Yeah. When they're battling it out for Dude, first, he, everyone's just like, what the fuck is happening at the front? Yeah. And they just continuously have it on them. Yeah, yeah. we still haven't seen And, that, like, you that, know, that like, video. all right, so then they go across the finish line, like, skip down to the next people. Yeah. You know, like. I Don't th- follow I thought, the, the winner around the track the whole this. time. Yeah, like, I like, thought I thought fucking, like, for sure, my, dude, I. <laughs> wish you had your GoPro. Dude, I was, like, in Technical my helmet screaming fucking, Monica! <laughs> he was like pulling away on the fucking last stretch, dude. I was yeah, like, and they're watching I come thought I was gonna corner, get him. Dude, I was and like, you hear, and I just see, I'm like, oh. all of a sudden, they do this. No, oh, dude. Like I try to hit the, cause like my last lap, I don't know. We probably had about a hundred foot stretch, yeah. and then we hit like, I don't know, whatever the track map, whatever. Probably turn ten, and then eleven, and then twelve, thirteen, and I'm just reeling 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 and i'm just like that last one there's like two lines you could take you know fucking you come out of the one you take it inside cut it and then shoot on the inside like that or you can take it wider shoot it more towards the outside hit the apex and i just try to do it the opposite of him and i just hope i have more just drive speed and just get out of it just be like and just be like have that photo line finish yeah and well, next time they'll have the breakfast burrito have a breakfast smoothie <laughs> but dude, it, it gets me every time we talk about it. I'm yeah, so yeah even on the ride up so here. So, like, dude, the best thing that's gonna grow it is just keep doing it. Yeah, yeah. You know, announce when the next one is. Get people fucking hype. Like, you know, figure it the fuck out. People that want to get involved and help in all angles probably should. Uh, you know, they should probably allow other people to come in. You know what I mean? Like, like industry guys. Well. <sighs> Industry guys, for sure, because we all have followings. I mean, yeah. not not to say it in a weird way, but just in general. Yeah, like of course. We, you know, the, back in the day, back in like the early 2000s, shows used to pay brands to show up to show up because they brought people to the show. Mm-hmm. Well, it's the same thing. Like you're the show, uh, you're a lot of this thing. So it's gonna it's gonna help bring people to the event. I wish there that you know if it's a if if the BRL is a it's a three weekend thing three day weekend deal no to your left no no it's in the cooler this one yeah i just pulled this one out oh okay thanks man so if you uh yeah i forgot my train of thought well you were saying that brands used to get paid to show up true and like i get it like we're in a different world now so you don't necessarily have to pay brands because events have something to offer brands brands have something to offer events right so let's just Let's just come together and make this thing huge. Right. But I I do wish there was more coverage of the entire event. They could have been talking about you guys in the in the class. True. Like how you can Dude, get there. They Why were, you know, like it's so were, attainable. They were fucking there like when we showed up, that trailer with the Mav TV people. Yeah, like doing with nothing. the with the Moto it's America nice. shit. They showed all the practices. Yeah, all that. Click, yeah. like, Dude, know, if they, they would have shown back. the practices in the lap times and all that shit, like that would have been fucking cool as shit because you're like, you you start to pick favorites before the fucking race. So then people are tuned in. They're tuning in Saturday, and then the, on Saturday night, they're like, dude, did you see that shit? And then they're like, no. They're like, dude, buy it. You can watch the shit. Race is live yeah, tomorrow. That's good. That's a really you know good fucking mean? point, yeah. Like, it gets people fucking amped. Like, you know, I wish they would have done it like that. But I don't know. Like, you're hiring so many people. Was it in the budget? Like, how much I think did also, they make? Yeah. Like, we're sitting here like, how can we make it the greatest thing ever? But they're probably still trying to work with what they have. See, we got to talk you know? to, like, a lot of the groundwork people. 
people that were just running around like subcontracted and just kind of like they're figuring it out. With yeah. That's why I'm trying to say this with a grain of salt because it right. is the first one. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And, and I hope that they and listen I hope to this. And take, if, yeah, if somebody right. listens to this, they're listening with a grain of salt. I invited Rob to come you on know. the podcast. So you will see if we'll see yeah. how that turns out. Who's the other guy? Uh, he used to have me on Facebook today. Um, freaking, uh, John Oaks? Yeah. 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 It was a great event. He was all around everywhere. Nice. Yeah, always had a fucking uh, walkie-talkie. There were, like, major <laughs> players that showed up, like uh, Trask. You know, those guys were there. He's been a part of it since day one, though. Yeah, yep. his crew so. was, like, deep. Dude, Nick, <laughs> Nick is cool as fuck. Yeah, Nick is cool. Yeah. Fuck yeah, I've Paul never Yaki met Nick. He was up there. Oh, dude, dude, I've never met Nick. Well, <laughs> I met Nick. I won't tell you where, but right. fucking, uh, <laughs> <right. laughs> the first time. Uh, that, But he showed up, like, late Friday night. Where our, it was, like, Friday night. Uh, no, wait, Thursday night. Thursday night. And then I didn't have shit to do uh, Friday other than tech. And I was like, my bike's good. Like, Morning. whatever. I ended up, I went through tech, and it was literally flying colors all the way through. No issues or whatever. Like, I read the rule book for the most part. And, uh. But that Thursday night, we got fucking drunk. Me and you, well, we were up till like what three in the morning, fucking hanging out with as expected. Nick, like, that. I mean, but then the rest of the weekend, I took it serious. I was like, I'm here to race. I'm not here to get drunk. Yeah. I was like, yeah, people showing up. They're like, hey, you need a beer? I'm like, no, I'm good. And I guess what? I gotta go qualify. So I got drunk. Like, <laughs> when I got done, I fucking sure I got in a white claw, I drink a beer, and I was like, I'm good. Yeah, I'm like I don't care. Like, yeah, it was cool. Man. I'm exhausted. Whatever. Like, dude, it was an exhausting weekend. Yeah. What between? Drive out there, drive back, 2,500 miles. Fucking. It was a last minute plan, though. Last minute the plan. The same thing, like, uh, I was thinking about on the, on the, uh, on the, um, when I was watching the video, I'm like, if I would have felt like you were seriously going to go to the race, I would have made an effort to get the helmet done. <laughs> well, so because at the same minute. time, like, I didn't, like, like, that's a gamble. Like, you know, for the most part, you, you've always been a. If I, if I joke pants. about something, most of, the time, most of the time, yeah. I'm already, like, 10 steps ahead. Because people are like, well, he has asked me earlier. He's like, when, when, when did you know you were going to go to the race? Yeah, like, and I'm I was like, well, what did, what day did we leave? <laughs> that's when I knew we were going to go. Because, like, dude, this motherfucker wasn't answering my text, like, when we're going to leave. He's like, when are we going to do it? in business, you know, trying to yeah. get to be able to leave. And I don't know if my but wife's watching like, this or not, back, but and I'm like, without my wife letting me go, this would never happen. So I'm shut up to her. This was so me. last minute. Like, we just got back from Padre, like, yeah. that day or the day before. And Steve's like, oh, yeah. Oh, I totally forgot you just back, got back from vacation. I'm like, yeah, let me unload my stuff so I can reload it back up and then yeah, handle my dude, business. I'm, like, and then... looking at running trucks. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, he's going to drop on me. I was like, I'm nah. already invested. I'm like, word, I'm man. $625 into fucking buying my things, which I didn't do till the Sunday before. Yeah. Because I didn't know, you know, and that. And then, But it's like, I kind of started know. playing the shit out before. Like, I had my leathers. I had my helmet. I had my gloves. I had yeah. my boots. I had fucking the 17 inch wheels and the tires and fucking like, you know, I'm like a little bit here. Like I wasn't, I was like, by the time it came to it, I was like, I'll make the best of what I got. You know, is it going to be the most competitive bike? No, but I don't care. At the end of the day, I go to people. I was like, I was fucking there. Yep. Yeah. The first one I was fucking there. Right. And I that's what's it. most important about making this event or this sport or whatever you want to call it grow. Mm -hmm. Show up. There was, average people there yeah. that did not have any experience i probably didn't even ride that hard but just wanted to be a part of it and to i'll make tell it you grow. what they came off the track yeah, with the biggest smile on their Fuck motherfucking yeah, face you know if they're anything like me or fucking homeboy with the, the apes or yeah. fucking david you know stocks stock shocks on his 19 road glide with fucking uh um you know stock suspension but he had mids you know so he was fucking ripping but only as far as, uh, you know, his missus let him. Dude, he was in front of me one time. Well, I think we were on, I think we were on practice laps practice, or qualifying yeah. or something like no, that. Practice. practice laps. And fucking his rear tire stepped out so hard. <laughs> fucking he just like first lap in. And I'm like, your tire's not hot. And he's pushing it. And I'm, I'm behind him. You know, he's like 75 foot. And I just watched him just. Whoop! And I was like. Oh, 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 oh. Did you save it? Oh, he saved yeah. it. Okay. There was dudes riding yeah, so hard, he, like, their tire came off the beat off their rim, wrecked, fixed it, went back out, raced, wrecked again, then went back out and raced again. Like, nobody, it was not, like... That's probably the good thing about wrecking at the track is there's no obstacles, really, you're going right. to oh, dude, yeah, dude, it was even when I yeah. fucking, when I put it down, like, I... 
I don't know. I literally, I literally <laughs> got up and I like looked at it like that, and I was like, I was kind of sitting in class, like, damn, my pinky kind of hurts. Like, I might as well just like kind of like tap my pinky on the ground. But other than that, like, dude, I slid on the ground at fifty, and like, I got up and I was like, pick the bike up, dude. I'll tell you, I was like, already like six, six laps in, and I go to pick that bike up. I was like, man, this motherfucker is heavy. No, <laughs> 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 side to the right but Dude, I threw it down on the right all I can side. think about like as, as long as I've known you all I think about is Harley needs to buy your road glide from you in like another year or two in a museum and just put it in a museum <laughs> like this bike did it all <laughs> it's funny so on the way back up or on the way back down I guess you could say uh, he was like hey man you know I'm this would be sick with like an adventure bike just to dip off in these little trails in Utah. I'm like thinking in my head, I'm like, well, fuck, let's unload this thing. Like, <laughs> take it out. But you, you've done everything thus far. Go take that dirt hill. <laughs> like, jumps. Yeah, fuck it. <laughs> Two, four hill climbs. <laughs> <laughs> but dude, I fucking like pick that bitch back up. And I'm like, you're so used to your bike. You get on from the left side to the right. Mm -hmm. Dude. When you have the bitch standing up, you ain't got no kickstand. You got to get on the right side to the left. And you're all tired, standing in dirt and shit. I was like, I had like five guys around me. I just wanted one to be like, you want to hold the bike while I try to get back on here? Can I get back on the other side? Because I'm so used to like lowering my right leg up. And like trying to throw my left leg up. I was like, I'm going to tip over. Yeah, what's funny was like they're so official. With, they're like, uh, we're waiting for the track to clear. We got some debris. And I look over and I'm like. That's his fucking speaker grill. Like, <laughs> <laughs> he's out there with a full blown radio and speakers. Fuck, <laughs> oh, dude. That shit sounds. I, I hate I missed it, man. Like I, I was on my trip in Maine, and uh, like I was trying to figure out an angle to make it because we did the two week trip to Maine yeah. and back on bikes, and then it was literally like, okay, then I have like a week and a half, and then I need to jump on the bike and go back to Maine. I did pick up the new ride. But originally, I was like, the Lexus ain't going to make it to fucking... Yeah, we had space uh, in the truck. Yeah, so what? <laughs> space in the truck. Oh, yeah. Why didn't... Yeah, it's just it so many... It was, this so, was last, so last minute. Like, dude, it was so last minute. I had 15 like, minutes before point, this like, was going to happen. Dude, yeah. I had half people go. Like, I didn't know you were going to go. I didn't yeah. know you were going to be here. I was like, I didn't either. Like, fucking like, To pick the trailer up, it was like, what, five? It was like 445. 445. Yeah, 445. I'm in the shower. We're like, close. And I'm like, it's five minutes away. Yeah, I pull up and he's out there. He's like... I'm like, yep, we're doing it. Let's go. Yeah. yeah, I mean, those kind of things are exciting because sometimes I think that there's so much on the line that you have to kind of do it the way you did it. To It's just like we went to New York last year, right? right? It's like, look. You were, we're taking a shit at 10 a.m. We're on the road by 1045. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, like, like, dude, he texts me when he's taking the shit. He's like, hey, it's a go. You down? And then that. And fucking by 1045. Like, I literally, I didn't even throw my backrest or my bag on it. I was like, whatever fits in the saddlebags, and we're yeah. going. And we fucking just hopped on the bikes and we went. Yeah, so it's like sometimes, like, those decisions, you know, like figuring things out on the fly. Because if you think about, like, planning something, right? Planning something also creates an expectation. Anxieties. Anxiety. So you're yeah, like, fuck, this right. isn't going the way I planned it. Right. But when you just fucking like, you know, you want to be there, you have a goal, but not an expectation. Right. Yeah. So I think that that's what well, makes it easier. Thing that was kind of fucking me up. It's like people are like, oh, I know you're going to kill it. You're going to get first. You're going to get podium. I'm like, I just try to like tone it back. Dude, I'm so just like, I don't care. I yeah. just, I want to be here. Yeah, dude. Yeah, I so just want to be here. That's all he kept saying is, I just want to be here. I just want to have fun. I just want to be here. Just like, I don't fun. give a fuck. I, dude, I was happy with where I started. Do you think the race mentality could really do a lot of all of us in the motorcycle industry a good humbling experience? It's yes. almost like yes. you, you hear Joe Absolutely. Rogan talking about doing jujitsu. Yep. It's like it's a humbling thing yep. for a man. Absolutely. Do you think racing Harleys can maybe humble a lot of the bike if builders? It and stays with how this weekend felt. Yes. Yeah. Where it was 
this person has a broken part. How can we help them? How right. do that? Where it, it goes less away from the fucking competition. Like, I don't want to help them because they might beat me. It's, it's like, I want to help them so I can fucking be Race. challenged by that motherfucker. Right. Yeah. You know, like, I know they might be better than me. Yes, I have this part. Here you go. Right. You know, like, if it stays with that, fuck yeah, it'll help us all. And you know what's but gonna if it gets be... to that fucking cockiness of, you know, where... I have this part, and I'm not going to tell him I have this part because fucking blah, blah, blah. I think the only way, way to get to that point, wait, go ahead and finish with you. I was going to say, uh, with the way that people are building bikes now for the street, it's going to be interesting to see who's willing to step up to the plate to grow the sport. That's that's what I'm interested in. Like, Well, I, you know. in a sense, though, like, let's, let's be kind of real and go down a high weed. Yeah, let's go in the weeds. Let's go in the weeds. Uh, so, like. How does this intertwine with the motorcycle industry that we've all grown up with in Harley Davidson? Well, you can't run high shocks and not be willing to go on the track. That's what I've learned. Yeah. Just this last weekend. And even for me, like, I know I don't ride as hard as Steve. I probably know I don't ride as hard as a lot of people. But I'm willing to challenge myself. I'm going to try to figure out how I can intertwine even in the sport. Even if I'm with last, I don't care. Yeah. One thing's hanging out with Steve this whole weekend was, like, He's very a humble dude. Like, he was sitting there drinking water, smoking a cigarette, and on the announcers, like, they're talking about him. And he's just like, oh, yeah, that's cool. Like, yeah. I had a lot to learn from that experience. So, like, that's why I'm willing to step up to try to help grow with whatever I little I can, yeah, right? Yeah. And so I hope a lot of other people are willing to do that, too. Even if you're just going to bring a sportster, there's a class for that. Even if you got a lot of money and you feel like... What do you on, mean, just a... Well, yeah. I, <laughs> hey, I'm not gonna lie. I had what a sportster. I had multiple sportsters. But if that's all you've got, bring it. Yeah. Well, because I'm you don't. You don't have it. to go out there and be reckless. You can go out there and just have fun. That's what the whole vibe was like. So, so I get that. I get that. But how does this? How does this affect Sturgis? Well, I or hope. does it does you know how does this affect Sturgis? How does this fit f affect the norm of what we're used to in the motorcycle industry? Well, there's because a lot of land wrong. out there, correct? There's what? There's land out there, correct? There is land. Build a track. It'd be dope. I don't disagree. <laughs> yeah. At the same time, it's the same reason why, you know, just now everybody likes performance motorcycles, right? But this has always been the smaller segment that now has gradually overtaken the dominant promotional spot of, uh, spot of what Harley-Davidson and V-Twins have become, right? For sure. And so, what I could say is if, if anybody wants to have a performance motorcycle – I want to see it perform in all aspects, yeah, including yeah. the track, including the track. Oh, come on now. And, well, I mean, I'm just saying after this weekend, seeing this guy bring his daily rider up against people who really made their bike for that reason, it's okay to I just have fun. Steve, I think Steve, I think Steve is uh, is an exceptional person in this in this uh, space he because he's a unicorn. He's not. He, he, he you can't question his riding. You can't question his ability to ride across the country. You can't question his ability to maximize the road that he's on, or the opportunity to ride hard when he can. Yeah. But the goal is to get the, the, the goal for performance baggers or this little section that me and Steve are a part of and have been for a while, not OGs though. There was a guy um, with OG <laughs> is a motherfucker. So, <laughs> hey, hey, listen, uh, OG, track guy. <laughs> Add that to the OG yeah. mix. <laughs> yeah. The thing in general is to get people to want to jump on their bike and ride them, period. Of course, you you guys made me. I mean, yeah. the first time we hooked up was what? At a Simpson camp out? I don't even yeah. know when that was. You know, I, I finished my day job, jumped on my Dyna in the middle of the night and rode somewhere. I had no clue who was going to be there, where it was at in the middle of the night. Showed up. I didn't know, I didn't know a soul. Yeah, and since then I've been like pushing myself, and once I got released with you know medical issues, whatever, I'm out there. I'm in Ar Arkansas, I was in Oklahoma. Yeah. You know, I was in Tennessee. I go with this guy. I'm like, yeah, you gave me a ride at the camp. That was awesome. It, it was, was raining. It was. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that, I saw you. I'm like, you know what? This guy does not deserve to get wet. Not in this case. <laughs> <laughs> not in this case. <laughs> but that that's the one thing that like I do wholeheartedly feel like what's going on with this is the best. Yes. Um. I, I'm I'm down. I want to support it, but I, I my goal is still to support just people getting out and riding their bikes. Of course, because as much as this is dope that people are getting on a track, 
because it's going to push our industry so much further. I'll, the the there's a big part of the industry that still don't just ride fucking bikes. Right, and so I've been talking. Do you to see Steve. like no, dude, no, no, let me Hoffman, yeah, me, Hoffman, uh, fucking uh, Clockworks. They they put a ride together dude, yeah, to go to the track. Yes, and sick. he invited me to. I was like, yeah. fuck, <laughs> like yeah. dude, no, to no, throw right, salt on the wound there, of dude, not being able to make it. You know, Mikel, Mikel of Clockworks, yeah. whatever. He messaged me. He's like that, and he goes to invite me. He's like, hey, man, uh, you want to be RL? I'm like, yeah. He's like, hey, we're doing this ride. If you want to link up. I was like, no, nah, dog. I think I'm going to race it. He's like, fuck it. See you there. <laughs> you know, because he already knows, like, I'm probably not going to ride the race bike out there. Yeah. Like, oh. yeah, and even though I'm an FXR dude, like, I've been talking to Steve after seeing his side covers and kind of seeing how people travel on their bikes. I'm not saying an FXR can't do it, but my wife won't get on the back for long distance on it. It's just a small bike, right? Yeah. It is what it is. I'm going to get a bagger so I can travel because – it's just, I want to travel with my wife. I want to put my stuff there. I want to have it. Does she want to travel though? She does. Cool. She does. Yeah. She really does. And the only reason we don't now is because it's a small bike. It's like, it seems like, <laughs> it seems like wives when you're like, all right, babe, let's get this thing comfortable for you. Yeah. And like every day it's a, you ever seen those memes where like the guys slowly turn into a clown? clown? <laughs> <laughs> the bike yeah. slowly turns into a car. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes but and don't get me wrong i love the fact that she's like in the truck with everything i need don't get me wrong like i love that part too but you can't like, ride how you want of course you, you yeah. know yeah. it's just not the same yeah. well, i think yeah. it's, it's probably harder for this type of like i mean i guess when i say this type of riding i'm not saying that like we're some kind of dudes that just go fucking balls to the wall every day all day but when me and steve did sturgis in 2019 and we went up with uh bob our bikes were loaded down with all of our camping gear, gear yeah. and all of our shit. And we raised hell through Spearfish Canyon. You know what I mean? <laughs> Fucking blast. So it's like. <laughs> Dude, we made no friends. Well, we stopped that little burger joint at the end. And I was like, quick trying to park our bikes. Because I was like, we just pissed off so many people. Yeah, bro. dude. So many people. So, yeah, it was uh, it was one of those deals. But, like, there's just Jeez, there's so much boring. more to this stuff, man. That um, Cannonball. Dude, I'd like honestly like life goal fucking sometime I wanna like blow the record for the New York to LA cannonball well, on a fucking two wheel. So this uh, here, here's how it's gonna work, right? So it has to be a hundred year old motorcycle. So in fifty years <laughs> you can get a good bike finally. <laughs> You're gonna start seeing like everybody do it. The cannonball is like a hundred year old yeah. bike, right? So yeah. right now it's nineteen twenty one. Good luck. Mm -hmm. When do we get to 2018? How many miles are we going to be on that? years. <laughs> With your high level of income and science, <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe yeah. you know, you could live forever. Two, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, do be, we'll be doing Cannonball in 120 years. Um, yeah, just a blast cost country on a bike. Yeah. Like, literally just, dude, I'll put on a fucking catheter. I'll turn the strap. <laughs> dude, I'll fucking, I'll You're turn, nurses I'll turn you up the your fucking DMs. saddlebags into up. fucking gas tanks Hell and yeah. just literally blow that bitch up. Like fucking 110, 120. Just psh, get spotters and shit. Like how fast can we make it on two wheels? Like, Should be wild. Dude, it'd be insane. Like, you no can you imagine foods. how dead you'd be? <laughs> By the time you stop, your legs probably wouldn't even work anymore to fucking put them down. <laughs> <He's> like, <laughs> the, well, we were on this last trip. Like, I got it got to a spot where we left uh, Nashville, and I've been riding with like nine dudes or eight dudes, right, for the last week and a half. And we were on the last stretch. We we're going to Justin's house, my machinist, before the Rebel Den party. Yep. And I, you know, I'm usually leading, and I, I do. My deal is I tunnel vision and I just look for cops, mm -hmm. right? So I'm looking at brake lights going over hills. I'm looking at flashers. I'm looking at like potential areas. I think that's a cop. fucking tiring too. It is 
But that's just, I'm used to that. No matter what I'm doing, whether it's me solo or me in the trip, I'm always doing that. And so I'm in this part. And apparently Cody drops his phone off his bike. So the whole group stops. And I don't realize that for 10 minutes after I got a message, <laughs> right? And so at this point, I'm like, I'm kind of, I'm going to keep going. <laughs> like, <laughs> You're in the groove. Yeah. Like, hey, so, you know what we call that? Huh. Keep the fuck up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I ended up That's fucking. That's Cody's problem. That's not your problem. Yeah. I, um, I, yeah, man, I, I felt like uh, from, I was about 50 or six. No, I was about a, I was almost like 70 miles from uh, uh, Memphis. And then we're going to Little Rock. So, I was basically like. That's like, what, another two hours or so? Uh, That's like five, four or five hours. It's quite a bit because. It's 350 miles from Nashville to Little Rock. I was just going from Memphis to Little Rock. I thought it was yeah. like about two That's, hours. It's 150 miles. Yeah, 140 so miles. Basically, I had 200 miles-ish to go. Okay. And so where I was going to stop at, like, for everybody else, because they have the smaller tanks at 125, I pushed it to 180 and then stopped, gassed up, and then made it to Justin's. Didn't have to gas up again. And then went to the Rebels Den and then gassed up 20 miles south of Rebels Den. And same thing, like I made it two and a half hours to to Justin's house before the rest of the guys. Made a world of difference, man. <laughs> Had so much. Dude, sometimes <laughs> you just need those fuck you moments. I <laughs> will those ones where you're just like, don't get me wrong. Problem. I love I love the big trips, man. I love I love it having so many friends to show them what I love about traveling on a motorcycle. But man, when you get it dialed in, like so, our core group. Is like five of us, and we got a dial. We can we can push the miles, but they still have small tanks, right? The way I like to do it is like, we got a gas station coming up, and like me and you would do it. And like, you need gas? You're like, I'm good. I'm like, all right, let's keep going. And then you just kind of push another 20 miles, and you're like, you feel good still? Yeah, another 10 miles. And you talk about it all the time, like we hit that gas station on the way to Sturgis one year. 186 <laughs> miles. <laughs> 186 <laughs> miles at 105 to 115. And I put in 5.986 gallons. <laughs> Dude, that thing was sucking fumes. <laughs> yeah. well, I want to so, bring up that point you were talking about earlier of making people want to ride more, just in yeah. general. So we met a guy, uh, again, for the second time, who was at the Fast Life camp out. And he was actually at the event, yeah, the racing league. And I think his name is like Woodgrain Sportster. And he was there with his like pops or something. Mm -hmm. Dude was something. Yeah, they showed up to the house in Dallas. Oh, there you go. Oh, with like Joe Kidd and all those yeah, guys? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, that's Yeah, so that's he showed up there, and that and right? introduced himself again. I was like, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, I remember. Like, right. Right. Those dudes came down from like Idaho or some shit. Yeah. 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 So yeah. they came down from Idaho, which apparently right. from where we were at was like three hours. Right. Not but bad. still, like part of the community, part of the event, part of growing all of everything Harley younger generation culture that we're trying to yeah. build here, right? So don't be afraid. Show up. <laughs> I'm going to cool that back down for later. Are you yeah. hungry yet? Me? Yeah. What are we going to eat? <clears throat> well, I know you like. Maybe you like snacks. Oh. <laughs> so on the way, what, down? No. On the way up to the event, we had no clue we were going to stop here, right? Yeah. But for some odd reason, I had this vibe. I'm like, I was hungry myself. So I grabbed a couple snacks, more than a couple. And I just so happened to slip something in my bag that reminded me of Steve and yourself. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck out of these! I know you will. Hey, I'll tell you what. I, as a young kid, I grew up on those things with yeah. crackers. You'd smash them, hit a little mustard in them. If you ever want to do keto, this is uh, <laughs> this actually has one gram of carbs. So, so I bought that, bad. and Steve was like, "Are you shitting me?" I'm like, "No, I'm not shitting you." I'm like, "I'm literally gonna hand him that." Hey, I'll eat these tomorrow. Fuck yeah, dude! <laughs> I was like, I "What it. are you trying to be, Jace, right now with the Vienna sausage?" <laughs> yeah, I was like, "No, it's just for him." <laughs> no, nah, I, I fucking yeah, those things are dope, man. People, you didn't grow up poor. In the, dude. I grew up poor. I've right? learned awesome. how to make poor food more more enjoyable. I found myself cooking uh, ramen noodles, ramen, however you want to say ramen. it. Say ramen. Ramen. It's got to be fancy. Ramen. Right. Um, 
I just found myself throwing shit. I'm like, damn, damn, this is good. You know what's really good? A ramen sandwich. I don't know about that. No, you could take a ramen and spread it into two sandwiches. That's like two bowls of soup. If you're really like so, struggling. my wife showed me this, and she's she doesn't eat a lot, but she's like, why don't we just put two of the same ones in there? I'm like, you can do that too. It's, it's so much it more. Out. It's like stretching it out. Yeah, this is why I'm fat. <laughs> <laughs> and hot sauce, bacon, dude. dude, all kinds of shit, man. I love that stuff. Hell yeah, dude. Poor food is the best. It is. It's very versatile. Yeah, it's like you can jazz it up or tone it down. Dude, I've seen people eat ramen like out the thing just. Raw and like, what is it like? It, like? What is it like? Snort the fucking, uh, <laughs> snort the pack, the sauce packet, take a chunk, of, a chunk. <laughs> just eat a chunk of the raw ramen yeah. noodles and shit. Hell yeah. Oh, oh, Mr. Spice. Topping up. So, hey, I wanted, I think that, uh, I know that you, are you guys trying to stay here? You're going to go head out. What are you going to do? You said it earlier, I have no job, so. If you guys want to <laughs> crash at the house now, you can. We just got to figure out the trailer situations. Cool. My wife's got to go to work in the morning. But I think that we should wrap up this podcast, and I would like to do one where we could talk about the other situation that took pace, place last week. Let's oh, do we it. Oh, we got a Patreon it? On Patreon Let's do it. it. Let's with, do it. You down to talk about that? Because I, I know I am. I and I got no dog in the fight, but I got some shit we can talk about. Some opinions. Some sure, opinions. I can add some. Huh? I can fuck add em. my opinion. Fuck them. That's right. I do want to ask em. you something on here, though. Um, obviously, you ride hard on most roads you, you go on. Um, do you feel like you're re- ridden the hardest on the track, or is it just more technical? Like, have you ridden harder off no, the track? That was – that definitely, like, upped it up. Yeah. You know, like, literally, like – Cause like I was saying, like when we kind of went over like the track detail and shit, you know, fucking when you look at it, like you when you look at the track when we pulled that up, it just was a bunch of lines. Right, it doesn't show the extreme like that front straightaway where it's like literally I did those those last three turns where it's like technical. Fucking, I mean, like you're picking a line. I picked five different lines through that thing just to figure out Which how one? I could get the fucking drive, and it was like going down that straightaway across the finish line and it's I'm in fourth gear and I want to pull fifth but it's like as soon as I like I watch the thing tack up to like 6400 you know in fourth gear and I'm just like boom and then I'm like time for brakes I mean you just grab a fistful of fucking brake and I never knew if the bike was just gonna go (laughs) (laughs) and so at that point the tires are so hot like he didn't really recognize it or realize it because he's pulling into the pit he just he's just ready to chill right and like I'm like the crew guy right so when he's doing that those tires are so hot that when I well when he did that and he pulls back in I can see these globs of just rubber that are just stuck on there like a spider web dude wow and it's it's just it's insane it's it's, fucking that and it's like I'm literally grabbing a fistful of front brake and I'm grabbing the clutch and I'm downshifting and I'm coming into the corner and I'm just feeling the ass end wag. And it's because I'm so heavy on the fucking front brakes that the ass end is just whoop. And, you hear and then like that, and you don't quite want to fucking throw in the corner when the ass end's that loose. But, but you, got you no get choice. to a point and you're just like, I got to. And you just and throw it down. And it's a lot of bike to do that. And you're just like, all right, was that perfect? All right, can I go? A half second more, a quarter. So second you're more. trail breaking right throughout most of this. Uh, decent amount, some corners. Yeah, you yeah, know, and everything. You're too. figuring it out, and then you know, hanging the body off the best I can. Like, I guess I like you get some guys, you get lighter little guys that look like they're just fucking off it, just everything. If I hang everything off the side of my bike, being <laughs> 300 fucking pounds, dude, that motherfucker is skating sideways. I will like. Pick the tires right up off the ground if I thought I could throw that much weight on yeah, the side. Yeah. So, like, I got to play around with that a little bit, and I'm still trying to, you know. Yeah, like, and if you go look at your chicken line on your on your rims, or your tires, I'm sorry. It's you, still there. Yeah, I mean. You still there. had more? Oh, yeah, that. He, like, I got. I saw the pictures you posted or yeah, the they're, stories. They're still, he had still two like beard a, hairs. Like, yeah, that was it. Like, the whole word Dunlop is gone. Yeah, there's nice. still more. There's still more. There's. 
you stay there still more because you were out there. But like I'm looking yeah, at I'm it like from a technical aspect. I, I know, know that bike can lean over harder. I yeah. know it. And, dude, that was the hardest thing to me was throwing in the corner and just knowing that I had a limit point where I couldn't fucking get it tighter. Right. You know, it's like you doing it and then with the floorboards chopped in half and my boots half hanging off, it's like I feel my fucking and it was like the more laps I did, I was like I knew it. I was like, all right, it's gonna go right here. It's gonna right there. But I like, feel like that I just I knew you. it like right where it was. Like So when it would hit when you would start to drag, like what was the immediate response to pick it back up? Or just to try to keep Sometimes it consistent. Sometimes I just, I just right. roll it through. And you'd yeah. see and it. And I just, and I'm just like throwing little white dust like right behind me. Because it was like coming out of the, the, the front straightaway every time. Like it was, I would have it just down. I'm hanging off the thing. And I just know it's like going to drag. And I'm rolling on the throttle as it drags. Just whoosh. Just Literally to get just, that drive yeah. out of that fucking corner. And so what's crazy is. I have, if you have, I have that, some if you practice, practice footage. I'm yeah. a 360 GoPro, but then my SD card got full and I left my camera on. So the race footage, I d never got on GoPro, but I'll go through this shit when I get home. And possibly yeah, we need up. a fucking another video, dude. It's yeah. getting goddamn ridiculous. But I feel like if you... It's if, so ridiculous that, like, YouTube is recommending videos I've already watched of yours. Can I explain? <laughs> no, uh, I feel like once he raises up those floorboard mounts, then you run into the danger zone. Because I've seen a lot of guys, like you saw... They were so high up that they could run out of tire. They would go out there and they start leaning, and there's nothing there, so they're just they wash out. Mm -hmm. So How now do you solve that problem though. Riding. That's the only thing I can think of. You'd hang off the bike. More. You gotta hang off. And you yeah, just ride it. You gotta ride it. You gotta ride it more. You know, yeah, that makes sense. It, yeah, because yeah, I, I saw a lot of the. Because like a lot of my like first pictures, like you were still pretty centered, just a little bit off of it, not quite like and Connor. Dude, like, and you and had like, choice. That, yeah. like, you know, straight up, dude, it's sensory fucking overload. Like, I'm sitting there, and they're like, all right, do this line. Go in there that fast. Hit this much brake. Hang off the fucking And bike. then watch the flags. Dude, it's like all this shit's going on, and like, yeah, look out for flags. And like, I don't know the what the fuck's going on. Like, like, I'm still all trying to learn this. That's a like, pretty mountain. I'm no, going to no, ride there later. Right? We were walking the track, <laughs> and everybody's like, and oh, you're gonna, my God, you're gonna staring. People, you know, I'm like, you're going to get people to, on like, the fucking sidelines that are like, you should do this. You should do that. You should do that. All right, go out in fucking front of me and show me in front yeah, of me. Yeah, and there's a lot of you people trying I mean? to tell like, you what to do, and they're not it's even out so, there. It's like, so, like, I'm trying, you know, like, watch my progression from the first qualifying to when my, I raced. I would yeah. say you, you know, didn't try. Like, I had people come up, they're like, dude, you look on your Sunday leisure ride, and they're like, tuck behind that motherfucker. And then I got that picture I put on my story today where it's like, finally coming down the straightaway where it's like, I'm cutting out of the corner. And I'm leaning over and I'm coming back and I'm not sitting straight up. I'm just like, you know, which I did on the street. I'm like, just so I can see over the fucking gate. Dude, you had a hundred miles on the racetrack. That's more miles than most people do in their weekend. Yeah. Or in a week or in a month for some of those guys. This is OG. OG. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I feel, so we're gonna, I feel we're a gonna, transition segment. We're going to end this right here. Yeah, we're going to this. Take a little five cool. minute little break. I'm going to reset it up. Perfect. And then we're going to kick off the Patreon, which is still going to be video form, but... It's going to be going video. I, I think it'll be live, but I don't know if it'll be live on this. It might be live only on our Patreon. Okay. So well, but let's say, have him say who he is. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So everybody knows. Oh, Rennie. okay, cool, yeah. Uh, my name is Rennie. Um, Easy Rider Cycles. Easy Rider Cycles. I do cycle? It. Cycle. So right. the reason why I did that was because there's only one rider. I like to take my shit easy. My whole life, I try to take it easy. Not just riding. Isn't it because there's Easy Riders magazine? Oh, no, that's uh, with did, an S. You ever heard about it? Not at all. <laughs> no, I did. Uh, so I grew up in the 90s. Yeah. Obviously, I yeah, put a little secret out there for you all, you guys. That's where I got to, like, see tits and, you know, whatever. I don't know if I could say that stack on YouTube bag. or not. Stack, <laughs> hey, stack bag, you know, whatever. So, like, I like that culture of just being a biker. Just well, next like, time whatever. I get attacked by it, you better stick, stick up for me. Hey, I, I did. <laughs> you did, yeah. I did. Yeah, 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 I did. But no, I deal with FXRs, FXR parts, yeah. but I'm just a motorcycle guy, Harley guy in general. Like, I Why had Sportsters. I had my first bike was an XG750 because I tried to be like a hooligan racer. Oh, you're on his yeah, website. website. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, uh, it's it? all I do. Like, I don't have a 9 to 5. I have a 12 to 12. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm just, I'm just trying to, like, you know, do something different. I'm, yeah, that's my little FXR. My little one. Wait till you see the big one. Cool. Yeah. Cool. And I supported Steve this weekend. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I didn't bring my bike. Like, people were trying to talk to me. I'm like, talk to him. Like, yeah. Don't talk. Yeah. And he's like, don't talk to me. <laughs> no, but uh, I would say one thing uh, I'm in 
this little realm of world because of Jace, right? And um, you guys put events on. I know Steve's going to have a camp out in like two fucking weeks or something. Let's talk about that. I forgot about it. Yeah, yeah, let's talk about it for like a quick second. Yeah. Like, you going to go to your camp out? <laughs> yeah, like, let's if talk I don't blow that. my bike up at the race. Yeah, no, like, you know, if, if people don't have an opportunity to like show face, hang out, meet a lot of cool dudes, that's yeah. what I did. That's why I'm sitting at this table today because I came out and showed out and met the cool dudes. Steve's having a badass fucking camp out. Come support this guy. Mm-hmm. He just fucking races fucking daily rider. Like, come on. Man. I got to bend the fairing straight, dude. That fairing. It's, it's cocked. Like it's cocked party. like a pistol, boy. <laughs> I was like looking at it when I was in the trailer. I was like, I never noticed while I was on it. I was like, I think the fucking handlebars. Are you doing are surges? Too. Yeah, fuck yeah. If I'm you, if you do your camp out and figure out how to also simultaneously come back and do surges, and you show me the method, I'll do it next year for sure. You're not coming to the camp out? I, dude, I don't know how. I, I get busy. I, do you see the bikes? I have room in the truck. I try not to work. <laughs> yeah. Like, you said, like earlier you said, do you even have a job? <laughs> I mean, I do, but I don't. <laughs> it's uh, it's tough, man. That's Sturgis is that one thing a year where you know as a motorcycle shop, if you get in the right with, with the right you're a bigger scene. you shop, yeah. Well, just the right scene. Like, right. you got you to gotta be someone that's providing a yep. service that people need for Sturgis. And so if you're a guy like me that's painting bikes, people want to get their and shit helmets. dialed for Sturgis. And helmets. Um, so that's why we stay busy You are between busy. June. I've got to stand up, dude. I've been in the car. <laughs> He's like, fuck this. i got to stretch his legs out. <laughs> All right. Well, let's wrap this one up. And then uh, thank you guys for doing this. Cool. <laughs> Cigarette time. I'm going to go pee and then I'm going to re- see if I can get this thing set up. All right. I'm going to smoke smoke.